that beat i wish i could sit back and pretend and lie and say that i don't like that beat but i, I do i love that beat and i don't know if it's if it's just me man i'm missing ks man i'm missing kevin samuels man like it all happened yesterday i won't even lie man i have yet to really grasp that our brother is gone that's the, the impact that he had on me and i know the impact that he's had on a lot of other people and uh, shout out to KS, his family, his daughter, his mother, and uh, all those that supported him. And shout out even to the KS uh, haters who actually built his platform. Because if it wasn't for the haters, I'm telling you, you know, and it, it wasn't just the, those that supported him made him uh, great. It was the haters who kept on coming. Shout out. We would, this drink goes to Vivica Fox and all those ladies on Soul Fox, uh, Lisa Ray. And the rest of them sat up there and hated that man to the point to where he ended up when he did pass. He was four million dollars in the black. I ain't mad at him. Four million dollars. That's a good way to pass on and leave a nice little change to your family. So shout out to KS. All right, guys. I've been looking to do this topic again for over two years. Those two years. I've been following the laws and the rules in regards to passports and so forth. And just wanted to make sure that I had got the proper updated information. We've had the pandemic go on, but now it's over with. Individuals are starting to travel. And since the pandemic, America has gone through a record number of individuals filing for their passports. I'm telling you, passports is like a new fashion now, a new style. I'm so glad that most of us that got our passports got them, uh, you know, a few years early. Or, or, or a while back, because right now, passports are the in thing. There are over 20 to 30 million passports that uh, American citizens have, and that include military individuals as well. But I'm telling you, passports are where it's at right now. And so if you don't have your passport, I hope this, episode's mo this episode motivates you to get your passport. I see a bunch of you guys coming in. We have 28 people in the stream already we got super chats waiting for us thank you brothers we got we got cash apps that have come through already and i just want to say thank you first of all to the live stream queen herself felicia hello everyone welcome to the channel please wipe your feet at the door and what she means by that make sure that you click that like button we like you we hope you like us too let me know guys if you can hear me clearly let me let me turn my, turn my telephone up See if I sound crisp and clear. Like you. All right, I sound good. Sound good, looking good. All right, that's good. That's good Wi-Fi right there. That's good Wi-Fi. All right, get the lighting just right. You know, you know, as people of color, we gotta have the lighting just right. Okay, there we go. All right, our topic tonight is: Can you get a passport as a felon? As well as, can you lose your passport? What is it that can cause you to actually lose your passport and what you can do about it we're going to talk about this this is very important because a lot of people think that once you get your passport you can't lose it uh, that's not necessarily true and some people think because they didn't get their passport 
when they apply for it the first time that they'll never be able to get their passport. And that's not true at all also. So we're going to talk about not only what can hold you up, also what could cause you to lose your passport and how you can get it back or get it for the first time. And as you guys well know my story, but we're going to go through all that once we get done going through the hellos and what's ups and so forth. We've got Terry in the building. What's up, brother? I'm glad that you made it. This is a good topic tonight. All right, Sam. What's up to Felicia? Terry said, I'm still waiting on my uh, holistic appointment. On a, I don't even know how to pronounce that one. Oh, oncologist appointment. Okay. I guess I'm dipping into somebody's uh, oncologist appointment. Okay. Uh, Bruce in the building. <laughs> okay. Give me some clarity, Perry, Terry. All right. Thank you for the $10 super chat, brother Bruce. One time for the one time for the one time salute in the building, man. Hey, hey it's a nice topic, Bruce. It's going to be just worth your monies, just like uh, with uh, Don Omar in the building. It's not a live stream without Don. Uh, pop the party off. Yeah, brother, I got the drink in hand. It makes sure, guys, you already know today is Friday night drink in hand episode. I don't care what you're drinking. Bottled water. I don't care if you got the healthy water. Looking at your alkaline. Uh, cool with me. I don't care if you got a smoothie, a nice cup of coffee tonight. I don't care what you got. I don't care if you got your favorite elixir, your favorite spirit. Just make sure that you got a drink in your hand tonight because we got a good topic. You want to drink to this one. I promise you want to do that. To those of you that got a chance to see the video that I dropped earlier for the Petronio Alvarez Festival here in Cali, Colombia, next this up and coming August is between the 5th and the 10th. I know that they're having the Flower Festival in Medellin, which is a great party as well. A lot of people go to Medellin first and enjoy that party and then come shoot over to Cali and enjoy the five day celebration here of the Afro Colombian Festival. It is the world's largest south american uh south american black festival in the world now remember what i mentioned before brazil is the world's largest portuguese speaking festival even though a lot of their population are afro-brazilians and berenkia is the world's largest berenkia here in colombia is the world's largest latin speaking festival and they have that in february and both of those events are in february but if you want to see some black folks and, and taste black folk food in South America, you want to be in Cali in August. If you want to see some of the most beautiful sisters and some brothers just celebrating and just enjoying themselves, free concert. And I'm talking about if you got a chance to see that video that I posted, I put po all that was from last year's all that was from last year's celebration. You got a chance to see some beautiful sisters, beautiful people from around the world. You get a chance to, to buy some and support the Afro-Colombian population down here as well as around the country. And the cool part about it right now, this year for the Petronio Alvarez Festival, that's what it's called. This will be the first year that they actually satellite the celebration. And I'll tell you guys what I mean by satellite. This is going to be the first year that normally it's in is in cali colombia this is going to be the first year that they actually celebrate it not only in cali at the same time they're going to be celebrating in brazil at the same time they're going to celebrate it in ecuador the first year that they're going to satellite the celebration of the petronio alvarez festival so it's going to be a big deal in South America. So if you think that it's a big deal in Cali, Colombia, and it has over 300,000 people come on average every year, I'm telling you, once this blows up in Brazil and in Ecuador, oh, it's going to be a wrap. It's going to be a wrap in about two years. So those of you who didn't get a chance to go to the Brazilian festival as far as the, uh, the Samba festival, this festival is going to blow up so much in Brazil that you guys will get a chance to enjoy that as well. So remember, here in August, on August 5th to the 11th, if you get a chance to make it down, make it on down. Make it on down. All right. Antonio in the building. That was my best friend's name back in Detroit. Tony Tone. 
Okay, uh, well, I know the first answer I can lose your passport just because of child support. Oh, that's on the list. That is on the list. But it's not what people think. A lot of people automatically assume that if I owe back child support, then I can't get my passport. Not necessarily true. There is a major uh, uh, loophole that the government gives you in regards to child support and your passport. So those of you that are paying child support and you think that you can't get your passport, not true, my friend. And we're actually going to go directly to the website. So you don't have to just hear my mouth say it because you might say Andre wrong. He don't know what he's talking about. We're going to go to the U.S. government's website and see what they have to say about getting your passport. Brown Spade in the building. What's up, brother? Appreciate you, man. Glad to see that you're doing great. All right. Noble is in the building. Noble and royalty. Hey, we've got a great topic tonight, brother. Got a great topic tonight. Glad to see you here. Deborah's in the building representing the A. OK. All right, Deborah. Then let me know if you got your passport, girl, because I'm going to start doing interviews with ladies. I'm setting it all up starting at the beginning of August all the way to the end of the year. There's going to be a lot more interviews with women in regards to their passport. I just I just watched a YouTube video yesterday. I'm trying to catch you with this young lady. She did a video on how to leave the United States fast and easy. <laughs> I was like, I ain't mad at you, sister. I mean, she, y'all think I'm rough. This sister with a smile was like, you got the, the murders, you got the, the, the drug abuse, you've got your, your, your boss abusing you, you going through this. I mean, this sister was just breaking it down. And then she ended up like, I'm going to tell you how to get out the United States fast and easy. And she started doing the same thing, talking about online jobs and how she's traveled around. And she was giving the breakdown. So I am trying to catch up with this sister to do an interview with her because to get her on camera for two hours is will be excellent. She's been some of everywhere in some of every country and she's doing her thing and she cute. So there we go. We're going to have it hooked up for you guys. All right, my man, Volak, Volak in the building. Good man right there. That's a good man right there. Confused the heck out of me with the intro. <laughs> hey, we got to continue to show KS some love, man. We ain't about to let that man pass on like that, man. They still got people hating on him. Felicia in the building. All right, Bruce. The coach is in the building. Yes, yes, we ready to do it. Alex is in the building. Oh, uh, yeah, rest in peace. Yes, rest in peace for that brother, man. Keep keep his mother and his family in prayer because I know it's – think about it, man. The, the first – the man's birthday had just passed in, like, March. A couple months later, he's gone. And now mother – the mother had to go through Mother's Day with the first – think about the mer the first Mother's Day just, just passed, a, 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 you know, a few weeks back. A few, uh, what, what was last month? Mother's Day passed on, and uh, she had to celebrate Mother's Day the first time in 55 years without her son. 55 years. She's going to have to deal with the first Thanksgiving without her son, the first Christmas without her son, and so will the daughter. So let's keep that man's family in prayer. Keep the man's family in prayer. Keep his message still going. All right, men's daily in the building. What's up, room professor? Professor Andre. I'll take I'll take that. I'll take professor and coach. We got the moderators here. Okay, moderators. If you see somebody in there that's truly agitated, now Charles is an agitator himself. It's kind of funny how I gave Charles a, a, a wrench and he's an agitator. So we understand Charles. Okay, we got that. I'm talking about anybody other than Charles that's ag that's agitating in the in the uh in the live stream, they got to go. They got to go. I mean, and I'm not talking about somebody that's disagreeing and things like that. Let people be, you know, have their points. But if you see like the whole stream is saying, why is this person still here? What? Why are we dealing with this? What is this? Why, Andre? Where are the moderators? If the, if the whole audience is saying this person's got to go, they got to go. They just got to go. No, no questions. Don't feel like you've done me a disservice by letting them go. Get them up out of here. You know, is uh, and, they, and they're and they're asking off the wall questions or making off the wall statements. Get them up out of here. I appreciate you guys who, who are the moderators. All right, let me uh, put this banner down here too. Oh, what did I do? Okay, here we go. Okay, Andre, you are messing up, brother. Okay, there we go. Make sure I get everything right. If you guys want to donate to the Cash App, shout out to those that have already donated to the Cash App. Appreciate you guys. 
Nothing but love. All right. Uh, Charles says, I think you mean Spanish speaking festival. Yes. The one in, in, in uh, thank you. The one in, in uh, Berenquia is the world's largest Spanish speaking festival. The word, the one in uh, Brazil is the one, the largest Portuguese speaking uh, festival. Absolutely correct. All spawn, all spawn from uh, Latin along with French, Italian, and believe it or not, Romanian. There we go. We got a little bit of trivia. We got a little bit of trivia. We're about to get started in a minute, guys. Get, letting you guys come through. We got 43 people in. Make sure that you guys have clicked the like buttons. I like you. Make sure you show love to us too. We got Felicia. We got we got man, my boy Clyde in the building. Clyde and Parnell? That's a combo right there, my boys. I'm good. I'm telling you guys, this is a good topic tonight. I really made sure I got all the information for you all. All right. Okay, Magic is back in the building. What's up, Magic? In the building. All right, here we go. Uh, isn't energy? Yeah, energy is in. Uh, how you know that was energy? <laughs> is energy in DR? I don't know, man. I've been. Hey, if you find an email or something, I've been trying to catch. Uh, I, I couldn't find her on Instagram. If you are on in WhatsApp in any of the groups and you find energy. Uh, yeah, that's the young lady I've been trying to catch you. I saw a video, but, uh, her email, her, uh, everything that she has in her email is set up for business. And I don't know why YouTubers do that. YouTubers have no just straight email for collaboration. A lot of, a lot of email, not like we do, but a lot of YouTubers have everything set. If you click the email, it goes straight to something that has to do with business and that's cool, but everybody ain't trying to just do business. Some people just trying to, uh, you know, just learn some things from them. So yeah. Yeah, that's her name, Energy. Shout out to Energy. Make sure you guys subscribe to her channel. Okay. Uh, oh, we got Ray in the building. All right. Ray from Big D in the house. Now, the question is, which Big D are you from? I remember I, I saw a headline that says, which, which city is, is actually the Big D? Dallas or Detroit? So which city are you from? Which Big D? Okay, all right, my man Bruce Rains. Uh, she was on her way to to New Zealand. Yeah, I did know that. She said that in the, in the video. So, okay, you guys already know who I'm talking about. All right, all right, look at you guys. Look at you guys. All right, uh, Deborah says, "Yes, sir, I got it. I have passport." Right? That's what I'm talking about. That's the love I'm speaking of, Deborah. That's right. All right, here we go. Dre on GQ cover. Yes, I am. I've been on GQ cover since I was 15. <laughs> That's right. I'm going to tell you the story. You know I always got a story. Check it out. My first girlfriend. Let me take a sip. First girlfriend story. First girlfriend, Michelle Holcomb. Yeah, I put a government name out there. If you guys know Michelle Holcomb from Detroit, don't do nothing. Just, just keep her in prayer. Okay, so she cheated on me. She cheats on me. And I'm like, why, why, why you want to cheat on our love? And it was with my boy who stayed down the street. I was the one that stayed next to the skating rink. You could have gotten the skating free with me, girl. He stayed down there. I was right next to the skating rink. So she cheats on me. I ask her, what, what, what happened? What, what happened? Why? She said, Andre, cause you dress too bummy. Remember that? Remember back in the day, bummy. <coughs> so I said, uh, I dress too bummy. Crazy girl, dress good. So I go to my sister Candy. Now Candy, my sister was like the popular girl in school. Never played a sport, but everybody knew her. Hung out with her. She was the girl that threw the parties and everything, right? And uh, plus, she was into girls and boys at the same time. So even in our younger years. So before this, before all this was this, my sister was this. Right. OK. So I asked Candy, Miss Popular. I said, Candy, do I dress bummy? She said she looked me. She, it was with love, though. It was with love. She looked me in the face and said, Andre, you just got your own style. In other words, that sister way of saying yeah, you dress bummy, dog. Now, I had a job, and I had just got a paycheck. 
man, I came to school Monday so clean and I have, and maybe I'm, I've been traumatized since that day and I need therapy. But since that day, you don't see Andre. Nobody will question my dressing. Never again. Never will that day, that cursed day occur in my life. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, that's exactly what happened. I, I, let me let me step my game up. And since then, my game been stepped up. Watch, shoes, cologne, clothes, everything. Make sure my hair was just right. If I ain't got no hair, it's going to look good. So now you know why my ensemble is always on point. <laughs> Uh, that's right, Drake. Kick him out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Larry in the building. Larry Perry in the building. All right, guys. Let's get ready to get started with the topic. I know a few guys that are in here I didn't get a chance to speak to. Shout out to all you guys. Charles, of course, in here. Let's say he said the big D is is uh what is the big D? Detroit. Somebody some say Detroit the D, the three one three. All right. Some say that uh uh. The big D, a.k.a. the triple D, is Dallas. All right, so there we go. We got the Detroit-Dallas bat battle royale going on. All right. Yeah, bummy to money. That's for real. <laughs> That's for real. Glad some stateside women just do you wrong sometimes. Shout out to Felicia and the stateside ladies. Okay. When it comes to your passports, a lot of us do have our passports, but a lot of us don't. And you might be questioning why you, if you can get your passport or not. We're going to talk about, we're going to go through 10. Yes, 10 things that can hold you back from getting your passport and what you can do about them. This is very important because this information is not just for you. Shout out to my uncle <laughs> who, who knew about this advice. This is my sidekick. This is the guy that's been through all the storms with me day one. We're like brothers more than the uncle because you know I'm I'm a little older than him. I always say he's the he he was the child that my grandparents didn't know how to sit down after they had some grandkids. They got grandkids all over the place, and here come Jeffrey. Like, ain't y'all tired of having kids? So they had to have one more, and that was Jeffrey, and that's my my uncle right there, my younger uncle, who's my my who's more like my brother. I love him with all my heart, and he's a good man right there. And so, uh, some of this advice that I spoke to you guys helped him out as well as helped me out when it came to getting our passports. All right. So when I say this, I'm the, Hey, this is all true. Okay. Here we go, guys. First thing that's going to keep you back from getting your passport is you. First thing on the list. First thing right out the gate is you as far as the passport. You told yourself in 2014, you go get that passport. Told yourself in 2019, I'm going to go ahead and get it. One, I'm, I'm about to travel. Then pandemic hit. You said, you know what? Life is short. All So many people kept saying that during the pandemic. Life is short. I need to go and get my passport. It is 2022, and people still do not have their passports. They, they shut the world down and showed you that they can lock you in the United States if they want to. The only people that got out were people that had their passports and could decide on where they want to do their uh, their quarantine. Some of you had to stay in the United States. You hated it. But there were other people that had their passports. Psh, they didn't see none of that. I didn't experience no quarantine in the United States. Not one bit of it. I didn't have experience none of that Trumpism, none of that mess that y'all went through. Why? Because of a passport, not because I'm better than anybody else. Now it's 2022. What is your excuse for not having your passport? You are the number one reason, not the government, not the, the Democrats, not the Republicans, not your, your, your expenses. Do not tell me you've been saying since 2024 that you, I mean, 2014, that you were going to get your passport. And it's 2022, and you've been through 10 pair of Jordans, $200 a piece, and your passport is only $135. You ain't got no excuse. If you ain't going to get your passport, just say you ain't going to get it. Just sit back and just watch the rest of us on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. Watch all the little pretty pictures. Put your little comments in there. Press the heart button because you like what we what places that we go to. 
cool. If you ain't going to get it, but stop lying to yourself saying that you about to get this passport because you're not. You're not. You are the number one. There is no excuse on this list that's greater than you. Not one. I searched, I've searched. I've scoured the countryside and researched all over the world of the internet, and I found that there is nothing that holds you back more than you. So if you're gonna pay that hundred thirty-five dollars and pay, go go ahead. Here's the, here's what you need to do. Go ahead, go to the website and print off a copy of the passport application, or go to the post office and get one as many of us already know. Go down to CVS or Walgreens. For $12 in their photo area, they will take your passport photo. They'll take it for you. Then you go get money orders. One for, one for I think it's 110 and one for 25 because one goes to the, to the State Department and one goes to the city. Don't fill it out. Just get a money order for 110 125. If you want to get your passport ID card like I got, how come my wallet is never around when I need it? <laughs> okay. Like I got, if you want to get the passport ID card, it'll be an extra like 25, 30 bucks. So you're paying 165. Then you go to the post office. They will walk you through to make sure you didn't do any mistakes with the passport. They'll tell you how to fill out the money orders. Make sure you have your birth certificate with you. Again, make sure you have your birth certificate with you because they will send, they will take it all, including your birth certificate. They'll send your birth certificate back to you. Don't worry about it. And y'all still talking about oatmeal and grits. Don't worry about it. And you will have your passport and your birth certificate back within, now it's two months. It used to be like, four to six weeks when I was when I applied for mine but now it's two months because so many people are applying for their their passports thanks thanks uh uh, uh rich rich say a long copy of the birth certificate so make sure that you you follow that advice because they're going to send it back to you you're going to get that back but at the end of the day it's time for you to apply for that passport it's, it's uncalled for it, there is no excuse for your family member who have been telling your boys all that. If you want to give somebody something for Christmas, give them a passport. Give them, If you want to give your child something for Christmas, your child is like 10, 11, 12 years old, give them their passport for Christmas. Boy, I'm going to take my, my, my little man down. He's going to get his passport. My little soldier about to get his passport. We see everybody else's kids got passports. Everybody, everybody else's culture from Africa to people from Asia to people from from Toronto, everybody else got a passport. But black folks and, that, and black kids. It's time for us to put an end to that. That's number one. Number two reason. We already kicked it off with that. Child support. Child support. Let me pull this up. The program right now. Let me pull that up so you guys can see the screen. Let me share my screen with you guys. Yes, child support is the next reason. And a lot of guys make the mistake of thinking that if I owe child support, then I won't be able to get a passport. That is not necessarily true. Let me put my glasses on so I can read this correctly for you guys. All right, let's look at this screen real quick. On the screen is from a, from my website it talks about passport denial 101. And it's from the Office of Child Support Enforcement. The Office of Child Support Enforcement. There is a policy that the government created, a federal policy called the Passport Denial Program. And what that program is set up for is to help uh, states collect child support. It's set up to help states collect child support. And the program is the Passport Denial Program. 
And a lot of guys have sat back and said, well, if you owe child support, you can't get a passport. That is not true. And my uncle Jeffrey can tell you that. And other dudes that I know that I've spoken to. It says, how does the program work? The act or talking about the passport denial uh, program provide uh, provides for the denial. Revocation mean they could take your passport back or the restrictions of U.S. passports when the parent owes at least. Twenty five hundred dollars in past due support. The federal government says that if you owe over twenty five hundred, you can't get your passport. You cannot get your passport as long as you get under twenty five hundred, according to the federal government. You could get your passport, but here's the kicker. It says this also, it says the law does not require child support agencies, talking about from the state sides, to remove individuals from the program when their past due amount falls below the 2500 Meaning, we're going to get to the next statement, meaning that just because the federal government says that you only need to pay lower than $2,500 you can get your passport if you owe back child support. But here's the kicker. Here's the catch. States require uh, states request removal according to their policies and procedures is based on a case by case review. Some will work with parents talking about you to set up reasonable payment plans to help them stay current while other states will require partial or full payment. And I'll tell you what they mean by that. I'm going to come back to you. Now, remember, they got that, that program. I'm going to come back to you and tell you what they mean by that. What they're saying is this. They're saying is that the federal government may have said that all you need to owe is $2,500 and you will be able to get your passport. The states are saying our our number is different. For example, the state of 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 Indiana is a thousand dollars. If you owe more than a thousand dollars, you can't get your passport, even though the Fed said it's twenty five hundred. But a state will say. If you owe. A thousand dollars. You can't get your passport. So as long as you get to that nine ninety nine. You good. You good. Another state will say 725. <clears throat> Another state will say 950 or 1200 or 2000. Each state is different. So how do you take care of that passport? Okay, here's what you do. First step, contact the, the friend of the court or whatever it is, whatever it's called in your state. Contact them. That's the first step that you want to take. Second step that you want. I know you ain't talked to your talk to the case worker. I know you ain't talked. She ain't trying to put you in jail. Some dudes don't talk to their case worker because they mad at the baby mama. Dude, you're trying to get your passport. Get past that. Some dudes thinking, well, if I call them, then they'll know I got a job. Dude, you're going to be paying to get under that 2000 or that or that 1000 or under that 750 anyway. So they know you got a job. If you want this passport, you're going to be real with this passport. You better take this advice. So when it comes to getting your passport and child support, each state has a threshold. Even though the federal government just said it's $2,500, each state is different. But the one thing that no one can tell you is this. If you're on child support, you can't get a passport. That is a lie. We just read it. I already knew about it. And then there's on other federal state websites that say the exact same thing. So anybody that's, that's, that's crying to you talking about, I can't get my passport, dog. Why? I owe child support. Well, how much do you owe? That's what the federal government is saying. That's what the state is saying. How much do you owe? If you get under that threshold, I promise you, once you get to 999, if your state says 1,000, 
you call back the you call back the uh, uh your caseworker your caseworker calls the people that are over the st over at the state department and they take you off that list and you get your passport that's exactly how it works but if you don't reach out to your caseworker to find out how much you owe how much does your state require for you to have what's their threshold because some of you dudes, you don't even know your threshold. And it, let me let, hit Jeffries. I'm glad you, that you said that, Jeff. Jeff said, I applied for my pa for my passport while owing child support. I know Jeffrey's story. I'm glad you, that you shared it. But was still able to get it. Uh, my birthday uh, hanging out. Wait a minute. My birthday hanging out or passport. passport. Oh, yeah. He said hanging out for my birthday or a passport. He decided to go ahead, use his money, get under the threshold, and get his passport. And Jeffrey came down here just a couple years ago. A dude that owed child support. So when y'all want to sit back and listen to those gossipy dudes and not do your homework, I'm telling you, reach out to the department in your city or your state that does child support. I know some of y'all behind on child support. Ain't nothing wrong with that dude. A lot of states... Before you even get a chance to prove that the child is yours, they've already started clicking the, uh, the numbers. Some of you dudes, you went to court for the first time and you 5,000 behind. You're like, how the heck I end up 5,000 behind and I ain't never been to court for this child. But either way, find out what your threshold is as far as your state. Find out how far you got to go to get to the bottom of that threshold and get your passport. And stop listening to dudes that don't want to work and get their passports by saying, oh, man, oh, oh, you can't get a passport if you owe child support, man. He lying. That's why I read the government. That's why I read the government's website. Because you can't tell black people nothing. See, if I was a white dude, y'all believe everything I have to say. Oh, yes, you would. I know y'all. some of y'all are saying, no, I wouldn't. No, yes, you would. If I was your white boss and I said it, you would have listened to every word I had to say. But as a brother, I got to show it to you from the government. So I just showed it to you. Make sure you do that. Next part of this child support. You plan on reload. If for those of you that plan on relocating outside of the United States within the next 10 years, maybe 10 months from now, two years from now, three years from now, I'm going to give you some advice. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> I'm going to give you guys some advice. You ready? Wear a condom while you're in the States. You need to wear a condom everywhere. But dudes, y'all got to stop having babies while you're in the United States. Some of you dudes are going to have a baby in the United States two years from now. Some, some female, you're going to have your passport. You traveling. You feeling good. You said, I'm moving to Medellin. I'm going to get my apartment. You happy. And Keisha going to come to you. Terrence, I'm pregnant. All your little dreams out the window. You got to stop busting on them stateside women, man. If you plan on relocating outside the United States, that's one of my number one tips. Stop busting inside. Of, I feel good. I don't like what I feel with a condom on. I don't care nothing about that. I don't like how I feel paying child support, man. See you brother sitting up there stuck in the United States paying child support when you should be over the borders enjoying your, your new life in the place that you said you're going to move to in eight years. You done got her pregnant on year seven. You made it all the way to eight years and bam, I mean seven years, and you got her pregnant a year before you got ready to move outside the United States. Your first son about to turn 19. You say, oh, man, here we go. <laughs> here we go. Little man grown. I got my I got my passport. I done already paid for my down payment for my Airbnb in Cartagena. I'm, I'm good. I'm out of here. Long, I love the United States, but I'm gone. Bam. Aisha pregnant. Yeah, yo, Aisha. Mm-hmm. The one I told you to stop messing with five, messing with five years ago, you still messing with her, and you done bust up in her. For you brothers that's going to live in the United States, I don't care who you bust up in. Go ahead. Keep on populating the country. I don't give a damn. 
I ain't talking to you. I'm serious. Some brothers, ain't nothing wrong with living in the States. Nothing wrong with that. You just use your passport to travel and things like that. Cool. I'm, I'm serious. I'm, I mean that from the bottom of my heart. I ain't putting anybody down. I'm not a cap, putting a cap on anybody. I'm not just talking bad. Every, all of us think differently. We got all different goals. But I am talking to you dudes that are seriously thinking about relocating outside the United States. You ladies. I don't know what the hell you thinking. You are going to retire in about four to seven years. I don't know why you letting dudes bust up in you and you already plan on moving to Portugal. I don't get it. I don't get it. You already told yourself that you're going to go ahead and move to DR. You're going to move down there. You saw what Taylor made dreams is doing with his life. You want to live your life too. You like them Dominican dudes with the Dominican uh, 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 bronze, uh, 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 tans, beach life. And you letting stay sad dudes bust up in you wrong. What are you thinking? Well, I can't have no more kids, but you can have diseases. That stay sad dude can give you something that you can't get rid of because you let him go raw up in you. All your little passport dreams are gone. Just gone. Just They just gone. Ladies, if you plan on relocating outside the United States, I always say this, and I say this to the day that I die, whether it be whatever reason in life, I don't get why women don't have more condoms than men. I don't understand that. I never understood that. There is no way in heck a man is supposed to have more condoms than you, even if you don't use them all. It don't make you know, dude, oh, she got all these condoms. She must be. Don't, ladies, don't give a damn about what a man got to say about you and what's in your in your drawer. Why you got all these condoms in this drawer? Because I don't trust none of you mother. That's why I got all these condoms in this drawer. Ladies, don't trust them dudes. They will bust up in you and roll out. Don't forget you having sex with Pookie. You ain't having sex with good dudes. You having sex with Pookies. Why? Because you ain't looking for a good dude in the States. You looking for a good dude outside the States. You want your good man to be outside the States, right? Because you're moving outside the States, right? So don't be letting Pookie bust up in you. She come up there shooting up the club. How your condoms? You should have condoms under the couch. You should have under on, on the, on the, the pillows of the couch. You should have condoms under the mattress, in the drawer. You should have condom section in the shower. You should have a condom section in the kitchen. You should have a, a kitchen drawer. You just open it up. Forks, mm, yeah, spoons, oh, yeah, your knives, okay, utensils, condoms. There is no way in. And you plan on leaving the United States, and you know how grimy men are in the United States. They don't get, they don't care nothing about your coochie. They will blow your coochie up and walk the heck up out of there with a passport. So the first way of that you don't have to worry about child support taking your passport is stop busting up in females, man. When you know, you know that you're leaving outside the United States. Stop that, man. Wear a condom. Be a man about your business. That's one of the ways why I know I ain't got no kids over there because I made sure. Mm -mm. Then I met Andrea. When I met Andrea, I was really done. But prior to that, mm -mm. no, mm -mm. no. And if you was anything like me, even before I met Andrea, I stopped messing with stateside women. They couldn't get. <laughs> Don't look at me for nothing. I wouldn't stay. What? A sister in the United States couldn't, couldn't get a glance from me. Ooh, she fine. Mm -hmm. Ask my boys. She fine, Dre. Mm -hmm. I wasn't hollering. In the, what, please? Please. I'll let y'all take care of that. Try to, try to have one foot in the United States and another foot out of the United States. Go ahead. But my point is protect your dream. Your dream is to relocate outside the United States. Protect that dream. It may be, you may have it say, you know what? I told myself that once I retire or get done with the job or get out the military, or once I get enough money stacked up, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and live outside the United States for six months and in the United States for six months. However, whatever your dream is, don't let it get messed up because somebody got pregnant. 
And I'm not talking about the kids are a mess up. I'm talking about the fact that now you got responsibilities in the states. Or now you got child support that's coming out of your coming out of your future holdings, which you had planned to save towards your relocation. When all you had to do was get a box of condoms to protect yourself. Come on, fellas. We got we, we got to be wise with this thing, man. The devil is out there. And you'll sit up there and be thinking that, oh yeah, but I'm leaving next year. I'm out of here. And psh, three months from now, Aisha pregnant. Aisha, you didn't got Aisha pregnant, and I'm sitting over here with Andrea, and we both just sitting up here like, we we'll keep you in prayer. See you next time. We got Miss Wallace use condoms to save a, a lot of chest. That's true. I'm serious about that one. We just on number two. Number three reason. Number three reason why you can put yourself in a position where you can actually lose <laughs> lose your uh, passport or not get a passport. Bruce says, facts, nothing about this game was supposed to be uh, was supposed to be one way. That's right. Sacrifices must be made. And one of the sacrifices that you're going to have to make, if you really plan on living outside the United States, whether it be six months, three months, full time like me, you're going to have to sacrifice, bruh. Ladies, you too. I like when he busts up in me. Well, you're going to have to put an end to that. Okay. Who you like busting up in you more? The brother from the States or that Jamaican dude that make you cry every time you have an orgasm? I'll wait. Oh, the Jamaican dude? Well, the Jamaican dude ain't going to want you if your walls blew out by the stateside dude and you pregnant by the stateside dude. I bet you won't be going to Jamaica pregnant talk about, come on, love me. Throw me in the air like you used to. All them days gone, Angela Bassett. So, ladies, you got to be responsible with your body if the dude who you with is not wise enough to be responsible with your body. And the same thing with you dudes, man, please. Please, there is no way in the world about to throw away my future for a nut when, when all these beautiful women on the other side of the borders of the United States, and I'm about to sit up here and bust in one of them stateside chicks and get them pregnant? Y'all crazy. Y'all crazy. Y'all better, you better man than me. I ain't that dumb. Yeah, better. You won't see me with the dunce hat on, holding my passport in my hand, watching everybody else go to other countries, and I get stuck because I owe back child support. It ain't about to happen. All right, here we go. <laughs> All right, the same thing here. I don't mess with American women. Don't. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you, Tone. I'm with you. Shout out. <laughs> Shout out, Pat, to play the round. Yeah, guys. Pads to play it around. Thank you guys for cash apps as well as the super chats. Thank you again, Bruce. Oh, yeah. Thank you, brother, for the donation. Definitely. All right. Let's go on to the next one. We already talked about number one was the number one thing that's holding you back from your passport is you. We just talked about child support. You can get your passport even if you owe child support. You just have to be under the threshold. So don't let anybody lie to you from now on. You at the barber shop, you talk about I'm about to get my passport. You owe child support. You can't get no, you can't get a passport on child support. Stop listening to them clowns in the barber shop. Start listening to your coach. I got your back. All right. So now the next one we're we're gonna look at is this. If you are a threat to national security. Now I know most of us don't fall up under this umbrella, but I'm gonna tell you what it's all about. Because people have fallen up under this umbrella. If there is something physically that you have either done or threatened in the past, I'm going to do this. Or I'm going to do that. And it's a threat to national security. You won't be getting your passport. And if you do, you show that behavior while you're in the States with your passport, they will revoke your passport. So don't say stupid stuff. Don't act on stupid stuff while you're in the United States because that will cause you to lose your passport and not be able to get your passport. These white folks, this, this, mm -mm, mm -mm. March, yeah. Protest, yeah. Go and do your thing. March, march on out there. 
uh, go and see your city councilman and your congressman? Absolutely. But when you start talking about you about to hurt or harm people, oh, that's a threat to national security. They're going to take that passport from your player. Don't think that your passport, because you get it one time, that you immortalize. Don't let that. They will snatch your passport in a New York minute. And how they do it is slick, right? <laughs> it's slick. They will wait until you come back from a trip. Hey, they'll see your pass. Oh, threat to national security. Hey, let me stamp your passport for you. They ain't about to stamp that passport. They about to keep that passport. Tell you to get your little happy tail back onto the state where you get to. You ain't going nowhere from now on. That's how they do it. They ain't about to chase you down, hunt you down. Next time you, you want to leave the country or when you coming back into the country, they, oh, oh, this is, uh, uh, yeah, I see you on my computer. No, you can't have this back, player. That's exactly how they do it. They just smoothly take it from you. Ain't no, ain't no warrants, ain't no nothing. As soon as you try to leave, they take it. Or as soon as you try to come back, they take it. So don't ever think that your, your little passport, because you've been having it for 10, 15, 20, 30 years, is immortal. They will snatch that passport in the New York minute. Do not get the U.S. government twisted. I'm going to go through these, then I'm going to go to the comment that you put, or the question that you had, Bruce. The next one is, Economically, if you do something to the to the U.S. economy, you know how those people that you, that you have uh, uh, anonymous that that the group that keep on hacking all type of stuff, and then a couple of go groups that that hacked hacked the uh, government last year, and I mean the year before or last year, and they got like so many millions. Yeah, if you get caught doing that, you forget about your passport player. Even if you don't do it good, <laughs> you call yourself trying to hack it, hack something. You don't even know what you're doing. Yeah, the government is saying, yeah, yeah let's get his passport. Also, when it comes to policies and laws, if the government thinks that you are a threat when it comes to policies and laws, well, I don't want to follow that law. And I think it should be this way and that way. OK, protesting, that's a good way. Going to see your attorneys, I mean, going to see your co city councilmen or going to see your congressman, that's another way. Reaching out by letters and in other ways, cool. But for you to sit back and say, I bucked this law and I got my rights and all that, yeah, you, yeah, you, you turn that passport in, player. You're a threat of national security. Yeah, you, you could turn that passport in. They don't play that. They do not play that. Talking about I'm bucking against the laws. The president has signed it and I'm not going to agree with it. Okay, cool. But you got to sit back and be ready for the repercussions. Lastly, let's say you are international. You in another country. We've heard this before. Somebody goes to another country and get involved in the protests or the anti-government behavior in another country. Ain't got nothing to do with your country. How many times we just sat up there and saw a white boy in Syria doing some stupid stuff? A white boy in, uh, in, 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 in Johannesburg doing some stupid stuff. Them country protests ain't got nothing to do with us. How they feel about their government is how they feel. We ain't got no business being involved in it. If you come to Colombia and you think what well, the Afro-Colombians are doing, they doing them wrong. They're not treating them fair. And you take your butt out there and get caught up in one of the protests. Don't worry about your passport player because you won't be getting that back when you get back to the States. Go ahead. I dare you. Go on there to some of the Afro-Colombian protests. Well, I was just dead in there. Okay, cool. Guess who was just, just so happy to be there? The media. And guess who the media got on camera? You. Since you want to go hang out at the protest because your little your little girl, Afro Colombian girlfriend, she part of the black movement of brotherhoods and sisterhoods. Okay, go ahead, go ahead, come on down to Colombia and get caught up in one of them protests in Medellin or protests in Cali or protests in Bogota. Come on down here, see how long you keep that passport. If you are a threat of national security, they whether you do something in the country or embarrass the United States outside of the country, you ain't got to worry about that passport again. That's a given. 
That's a given. We're going to go to the next one. So we already talked about you. We already talked about child support. We already talked about national security. The next one is what keeps a person from getting a passport. They're a minor. If you are under the age of 16 years old, if you have a minor that's under the age of 16 years old, you're shorty. They have to get a passport through you. Now, once they turn 16, hey, your little man can, a little or little mama can get a passport on our own. But if they're under the <clears throat> if they're under the age of 16, they have to get a passport by way of you and mom. They actually have an agency. Let me see if I have it pulled up. through the federal government and you may want to and they, and they talked about that you may want to register your child for this and so let me pull this up real quick because i want you guys to see this and it's, it's about making sure that somebody does you what this is it alerts you to if somebody tries to file a passport under your child's name this is this website, this federal web, this federal government website. I'm going to go to. I'm going to let you guys see it. What's up, Aunt? I'm going to go over to it, and it's the Child Passport Insurance Alert Program. And once again, once again, this program, and, and remember the name: Child Passport Assurance. I say insurance, but assurance alert program. And what it does, it alerts you. Once you get your child registered, it's absolutely free. It, you can register your child or your children to where if anybody, anywhere, the mama, grandmama, cousins, a stranger, takes your child's information and tries to register your child with the passport, you are automatically alerted. They will let you know that somewhere in this country, somebody and lets you know. You download the application, you see a proof of your ID, the following documents, your driver's license, your passport, and other form, or forms of photo identification, uh, documents in regards to you legally being the parent. Send your completed request. Uh, use the options listed below. And this, it lets you know how you can send that request by email, fax, or mail. And it, get, it allows your child to be registered with the federal government to where nobody could take your child and create a passport in your child's name. Some of you sit back and say, well, I don't want the federal government to know about my child. And this and that. We are U.S. citizens. They got enough registration on all of us. All of us. Don't think you had something from the U.S. government. It's just that whatever you got or whatever you're doing, they don't care about. It ain't that big of a deal. But it's always a big deal if somebody's out there trying to create a passport under your child's name, especially if it's the other parent. you like, wait a minute. This, did she sit up here and get a passport in that boy's name? Why you get a passport in that boy's name? Well, I think he just, you trying to go to Jamaica, to, to, to Dexter St. Jacques? You trying to go to Jamaica to Tay Diggs, Angela Bassett? If you don't sit your tail down and let that boy grow up in the states, so yeah, even if the baby mama tries to file a passport under the child's name, you are alerted as long as your child is registered. Now it doesn't say that your child is going to have a passport. It's just registering your child to protect your child from anybody making a fake passport under their name or or trying to apply for a passport under your child's name let me go to the comment section bruce asked the question he said dre how do you feel about people being uh hindered about their actions from the past and feeling trapped by their actions okay that's a deep one that's a deep question deep statement in regards to a person being hindered by their past i mean i feel like this the first person that got to forgive you for your past is you. Man, listen. Your boy Andre would not be sitting here conversing with you if I didn't forgive me, give myself of all the past misdeeds that I did. 
man, these people still trying to wipe my footprint off their window shed, their, their window seals. I done broke it to so many houses. Man, you know how many robberies I done been, been in? I've been robbed. I've robbed people. Man, you know how much thug, man, see, the Andre Yassi is like when you see the other side of the coin. You're like, hey, he's a cool dude. He's nice, and he's, he's a good guy. I wasn't always like this. Man, I'm, I'm, I wasn't a good person. I had the potential to be a good person, but I wasn't always a good person. So the first person who had to forgive me of all the stupidity, even while I was incarcerated, I had to forgive me of stupid stuff. That was the first step. So now, after that, I didn't give a dang about it. I didn't care about who else forgave me. <laughs> I didn't. Once I forgave myself, I didn't care about the people who house I broke in forgave me. Well, we forgive them. I don't give a dang. I don't care. <laughs> That happened years ago. <laughs> I don't care nothing about all the people I sold drugs to. I don't care all about the people that I shot at or shot. I don't care about none of that. All the people that I pointed a gun in their face, none of that pistol whip, none of that fought. All the women hearts I broke. I don't care nothing about I forgave myself. God forgave me. I forgave myself. Man, I won't go sit around. Oh, I forgave me, but could you? Man, I won't go walk around the world asking. You know how many people I would have been wasting my time? trying to ask them to, for the, for their forgiveness, knowing that half of them would have been like, hell no, I'll forgive you. Where's my money? <laughs> so, no. No, no, no. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, so if you're still feeling bad about your past or, or worried about what people have to say, like he said, he said, Dre, how do you feel about people being hindered? The only person that's hindering you is you. Not one time. And my Uncle Jeffrey can tell you this because he was there, like I say, he was day one. Not one time has my state numbers, incarceration numbers, or my federal incarceration numbers. Yeah, I got both of them. Ever, ever held me back. That's some, that's some stuff that you see in the movies. Yeah, I went to jail. Now I can't get a job because, no, 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 no. You can't get a job because you can't get a job. I never had one moment where they said you can't get a job because of your number. I've gotten promotions. I like I say, I walked away. I walked away from 70, 80,000 a year. Big house in the suburbs. So when I hear dudes give that lame excuse talking about, well, my number held me back, and they never held me back. Why? Because I forgave myself first. And I didn't give a dang about who forgave me, who thought about me, what they thought about me. Mm -mm. I ain't had no time for that. No, 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 no. And all you dudes and ladies that's worried about what somebody else got to say about you in regards to your past, damn them. You ain't got no time to be worried about what somebody else got to think. Did God forgive you? Yep. Did you forgive you? Yep. Keep it pushing. Some of you dudes been through divorces and you knew that divorce was partly your fault, if not all your fault cool brush your shoulders off you can't sit back and cry about what happened back then if you was a bad dad or a bad husband or a bad friend you got to forgive yourself and keep it pushing player there's too much life left for you to sit around moping around that i should have made my marriage should have made well cool the first marriage didn't work for a lot of us but look at me now first marriage ain't work for other dudes and look at other dudes now doing great things you ain't the first dude to ever go through a divorce. You ain't the first lady to go through a divorce. We from the United States. We love divorces. We have some divorcing mother <laughs> United States. So yeah, forgive. Forgive. Do not let somebody, and once you forgive you, once you sincerely forgive you of all the bull you did, all the fake checks, all the time when you sat back, you hustled and said, yeah, boss, I'll be in. Cough, cough. You ain't coming to work that day. All the time when you told a female that you was down for him, you steady sleeping with her sister. All the times. Oh, you ain't do that? Okay, that was just me, huh? That was just me creeping with the friend. That was just me pretending like I was going to come to work, but I didn't go. I had no plans on coming to work that day. That was just me, huh? I'm just, yeah, I'm, I'm the one. That, so I was the only one that would be that would be lying on PTO time. No one wasn't nothing wrong with me that day. It just so happened to be a good beach day. I'm in Florida. What do you think? 
No, man, forgive you. That's how you get your passport because you forgave yourself of all of the BS. You like, you know what? I'm about to enjoy the rest of this life. I can't, I can't, I can't make up for what I did in the past, but I'd be damned if I relive it over and over again in my mind. If I can't live it again in real life, I'm not about to live it over again in my mind over and over again. I'm having dreams about the breaking in people's houses. That, that ain't about to happen. Most of the time I have a dream, Andre in it, and we're traveling. <laughs> I kid you not. Most of my dreams now, me and Andre are going somewhere. We all up in Egypt. <laughs> For real, man. I'm serious about that one, man. That's in all sincerity. That's how I, that's how I did it, man. That's exactly how I did it, and that's how I still do it. Good question, brother. Oh, yeah, make sure you guys subscribe to my man, Roll the Tape in the Building. That's my boy, Richie Rich. Just got back from, from uh, Thailand, having a great time. I got to get rich on the show. It's been a long time. You know what? Ooh, I'm wrong. I don't think I ever had Rich on the show. He asked, we got up to our thousand subscriber on Rich's show. And I've never had you. You know how you take your friends for granted? Because they're your boys. You kind of like, I'm not my boys. You kind of take it for granted. I got to get Rich on here, man. I got to start taking advantage of some of these brothers. Yeah, so I'm going to get Rich to come through and show me, tell me about his experience in Thailand. Shout out to Rich. Make sure you guys subscribe. Anthony in the building. Appreciate you being here, brother. Exactly. Uh, exactly. If they want to know about uh, about you, find out. Uh, that isn't a scare attack. Okay, I'm kind of dipping into somebody's conversation. My bad. He said, talk that talk. Brothers change his life and move on. Yeah, man. You, mm, you can't sit back and be wallowing in, 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 in self-pity. And man, I, if, 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 the, if the relationship only worked out with Keisha... It didn't. And and then some of us, I'm going to tell you something. With me, I sat back and before I met Andrea, and I had made that, like two years before I met Andrea, I had made my decision to move to Medellin, right? When I did that, man, I had, I, I told y'all, man, I had to break up with somebody that was like really, really close to me. Like if I was going to get married in the States, this was that person. And since I knew I was not going to get married in the States and I didn't want to hurt anybody, I, t I had to tell them. And do I told I think some of you guys heard this story. That person cried like she was a three year old child, and man, that just you talking about <sighs> hit you in the heart. Somebody that you care about, you got to tell them the truth. I am not going to be living in the United States anymore, and you got to look at them just cry and just break down and just and you got to let them ride it out. You got to be the bad guy. But I kid you not, man. If I would not have made that sacrifice in that moment. It was honest with that person who's happily married now. I wouldn't have never met Andrea. I never would have never met you guys. There would be no love crossing, but that moment was my crossroads. I can either stay with the person that I have the potential to marry with the United States and be, be in the United States or live my dream that I wanted to live outside the United States. I was literally at that crossroad and it was hard. It was not easy. So I'm not saying that it was easy. And I knew whatever choice I made, I was going to have to be the villain. Either I was going to be my own villain by not going outside the United States or I was going to be her villain by telling her I am leaving the United States. But I knew I was going to be the bad guy and some tears was going to be shed. And so I was truthful. And look at the life I live. I was, I, was, I was truthful with me and that made me be truthful with that person. And so since I was truthful with that person and I'm, I was comfortable with being, it made me be more comfortable with, man, Boy, you have grown up. <laughs> the old Andre would have just lied to her for more sex. So since I was truthful, <laughs> I'm just being honest. Since I was truthful, then I have the life that I'm enjoying now with you guys. But if I was dishonest with myself, I would have still been in the States. I probably would have married that person, but I wouldn't have been happy. And it would have always been something missing. And I probably would have been sneaking off outside the United States cheating because I would have been more wanting to leave the united states so instead of putting that person through all that mess and put myself through all that mess i just said i'm not going to live here i'm sorry 
and I let her shed her tears and let her feel her woes. I, I wasn't coming back to try to have sex again. None of that. I just let that person ride it through. And while she was riding through her pain, getting over me, I'm getting my life ready. And all of a sudden, life introduces me to Andrea two years later. Kid you not, that's exactly how it happened. I wish I could say, yeah, it was so easy. No, sacrifices must be made. Sacrifice must be made if you're going to do what we're doing. That's why that uh, see, that's why I'm kind of like just straightforward with it and honest and transparent with you guys. Cause I'm not gonna sit up there and make you guys feel like, oh, it's so easy to do. No, <laughs> sacrifice must be made. Oh, Jeffrey was there. Jeffrey was there. <laughs> Whew. Oh, yeah. Okay. And said a uh, man rebuild himself uh uh into a college recruiter. Uh congratulations. Yes, Ant was there. Ant man, wait a minute, Ant Man. Uh, proof you can re uh, you could yeah yeah aunt, yeah aunt know about that yep to a college recruiter congratulations thank you brother uh proof you can redeem yourself uh that's that's my uh that's my uh my statement right there that I got from you brothers S Y S B E M save yourself black man absolutely correct absolutely correct so at the end of the day I'm telling you. And Jeffrey says facts because he was there. He saw it all on un 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 unravel from the day that I got out of incarceration. Jeffrey saw it all. And he and one thing that he saw, he never saw me go back. And I'm not talking about incarceration. I'm talking about he never saw me go back to the streets. He never saw me go back to stupid stuff. He never saw me get into fights and getting locked up and stupidity after stupidity. He never saw me go backwards. He only saw me go forward. Just go forward. Just go forward. And even when it was forks in a row where that situation I just told y'all about, why could have went this way or went that way? He still saw me just take the sacrifice and see what would happen. He saw it all. All of it, man. When I tell y'all this is my story, a lot of dudes on YouTube don't tell you their story. They tell you, hey, I'm at a party. They'll show you where the club is, which is cool because I need to know where the club is. But they never tell you their story. So I'm telling you my story, man. This is exactly how I did it, man, for real. Shout out to Bruce. I saw this, brother. Thank you very much, man, for that $100 uh, donation. I appreciate you, brother, for that. Thank you for supporting the channel. You guys know we're getting some new microphones. These are $250 a piece. And so we're going to do some great things, new microphones, new cameras. Uh, so we'll, be, we'll have the, uh, the aperture in the background and all that stuff. So I appreciate you, brother. I'm glad that you asked that question. And that's what I need to hear, brother. Thank you. Yeah, man. That that was that was that's my that's my honest story, man. And I, and I hope that that uh, you guys realize that once God forgives you and you forgive you, dang, what everybody else got to say. Dang, what everybody else got to say. I was the black sheep of my whole family. <laughs> it wasn't nobody in my family. Is great. We had some grimy people in my family in Detroit. But nobody matched the griminess of Andre. Man, they used to talk about my mother's uh, my mother so bad. You raised that bad boy. You look mm, look at him. Look, your boy in my boy in college. Your boy in prison. Mm, look at them bad Dorothy with them bad kids. Mm, they shunned my mom. She got six or seven. So, hey Jeff, did they not shun her? They shunned her. Mm, you see Dorothy kids, them bad kids. She got mm, Lord. But then when I came home and I was a public speaker and every every church wanted to hear what I had to say and every stage wanted to put me on it, then all of a sudden they're like, oh, Dorothy, look at Andre. He's just so amazing. Look at you. You raised a good son. Look at you. I'm like, man, y'all the same ones that talked about my mama in her face and behind her back. Y'all need to stop it. Quit it, people. Stop it. But you don't have no time to be bitter and angry at people and stuff like that. It also, to yourself. Yeah, man. I'm telling you, man, life is, man, there is so much life to live, so much to enjoy. Just forgive yourself of everything that you did wrong or feel like you've done wrong and move on. How you like me now? Yeah, Kumo. Oh, that's my song, too, back in the day. Maggie said, that was me, too. Yeah, man. Yeah, it was, and that, I, 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 well, I tell you what the funny part was. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell y'all something that was truthful. That fork in the road with that young lady 
was harder than the fork in the road to get a divorce. And I had a, a really good wife. We just grew apart. So it was easier for us to sit down. We literally sat down at the kitchen table. And by the time we got up, we were divorcing. And I, like I said, we didn't we, we didn't want to wait until we got all bitter and angry and mean at each other by trying to make something work that we knew wasn't working. So we sat down, made a decision, stood up. We were cool. Both people were hurting. I was hurt because I'm going through a divorce. She's hurting because she's going through a divorce. But the pain of that one young lady was greater than the divorce because this one could impact my future either way. The marriage, we already knew that was over. But that relationship was a good relationship. But I knew God had some great things planned for me. Sometimes a good idea ain't, ain't a God idea. If I would have stayed in the States with that young lady, it would have been a good idea. She's a VP of Frontier, beautiful, sexy, black and Irish, those big curly afro, dimples, the whole thing, freckles, the whole beauty. Five, eight, bam, bam, body, whole, whole cool, good people, sweet as heart. But was it for me? Now she's happily married and I'm happy for her. Because I'm happy for me. <laughs> I'm happily married. <laughs> and I'm living a life with you guys. So yeah, man, sacrifices must be made. All right, here we go. Here we go. Uh, thank you, Felicia, for putting up Mostly Money TV. Make sure you guys subscribe to our other channel, Mostly Money TV. All right. Sell up to both channels, Felicia. Thanks, Ant-Man. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, Zoom, Richie Mac, my other brother. Man, so many of you dudes I wouldn't have met if, man, if I would if I took that road the wrong way. I wouldn't have met Richie. I wouldn't have met Ace, Dave, Richie Rich, Flyboy Way, all these dudes. Dave, uh, Tech TV, the Tech Show, all these YouTubers, man. I wouldn't have met man. Aaron from Black Man's TV. I mean, black man's travel, all you dudes, I wouldn't have met, all you guys in the comment section. It just amazed me how you have impacted my life in the last five years. You guys have really, really had a major impact on me. You just don't know. One brother was telling me today during a consultation, he said, Dre, you just do not know, man. You're doing God's work. You're keeping some dudes from jumping off a bridge. And you guys have kept me from jumping off many a bridge. Not a literal bridge, but sitting back, making sure I realize that I've got a responsibility in this world and that my life means something other than just my nine to five. And I appreciate that. Bruce Rain always support, <laughs> support the movement. Coach Dre always on point with the message. All right. Zoom, 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 zoom. I like to fly away. I like to fly away. Oh, yeah. Shout out to uh, Daddy Long Legs. <laughs> oh, that's the other nickname for Dre. Yeah, I'm all, I'm all legs. And said, uh, if you did dirt and able to get a passport, consider yourself one of the fortunate ones and not in the ground. True. If you ain't in the ground, that's true. The next one we're going to look at is that one. I'm glad that you said that. <clears throat> Can you get a passport as a felon? This is a very important one. If you got enough, well, you see me, so that's a given. So how, how does it happen? It's almost like an oxymoron. How do you get a passport as a felon? Uh, Mr. Felon? <laughs> so so, so he, here we go. These are the things that keep a person from getting a passport or getting their passport revoked. This is what happens. You are on house arrest. That's a given. You can't get a passport or they'll hold your passport or revoke your passport if you're on house arrest. That's a given. Some of the, these, these are for felons are, are, are given. Number two thing that can hold a felon back from getting a passport is you got warrants out for your arrest. 
I don't care if it's parking tickets. I don't care if it's uh, uh, you got mad at a party and you forgot to go to court because you got in the fight. I don't care if there is a warrant somewhere in, in the country of the United States that has your name on it. You going to get your passport revoked or you just won't get one at all as long as the warrant exists. Now, notice, as long as the warrant exists, once you get it taken care of, you're good. You're good. The next one is you are in the middle of a court case right now. Okay. And some of this seems obvious, but to some people, they don't realize it. If you're in the middle of a court case right now, you will not be able to get your passport and they can revoke your passport. That's one of the things that they do the fastest because they like, hey, uh, he we might give him give him a bond and he might scoop scoot up out the country. So, yeah, put his passport on freeze <laughs> until we get this case done. The other one is that you're on probation or parole. If you're on probation or parole, you won't be able to get your passport. Soon as you're done with your paper, which is probation or parole, you will be eligible to get your passport. I, I, I know people, I know one young lady, she emailed me when I did this two years ago. She emailed me uh, like right after I did the, the original video in 2019 on this topic. She said, I got off of probation on Monday. I filed for my passport on Wednesday. She said, Andre, I just want to let you know I got my passport five weeks later and I'm about to take my first trip. You can literally, that's how fast you can get your passport. Usually it takes 30 days for everything to clear up anyway. Even child support. So just in case you guys that get to the threshold of your child support that we talked about earlier, it takes about 30 days for them to release your passport back to you or your or your opportunity to apply and be approved. It takes about 30 days. Well, in that window, your application is still being processed anyway. So it's not like 30 days and then you can apply. No, go ahead and apply for your passport if you're on child support. And it takes 30 days for them to release your 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 opportunity from child support. In other words, they call the Dep state department and say, "Hey, he good. Go ahead, release him." Now it doesn't take the whole thirty days. It usually takes like fifteen days, really. But they say, "Yeah, he's good over here. Yes, he's under the threshold, so y'all can go ahead." You see, I got the old school phone. Yeah, y'all can go ahead and let him get his passport. Go ahead, file his. Go ahead, process his application. Damn, you get your passport. That's exactly how it works. So if you're on house arrest, warrants. Uh, in the middle of a of a of a case, and it could be a it, it it could be any case. It doesn't necessarily have to be a criminal criminal case. It could be a civil case. You got a case that's going on where you may end up owing some money. You can't use your passport. <laughs> you 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 ain't gonna be fleeing the country, and you know you owe five million in crypto. Okay, so it ain't gonna work like that. <laughs> All right. You, you sit up there in divorce court, you know that she about to take half, so you think you're going to take your money and flee to Barbados. No, that's, they ain't going to let you do that, player. You in the middle of a case. You can't use your passport, okay? You can't get away with that. You in the middle of, of a major divorce proceedings. You, you, you No. Know, you see Johnny Depp waited until after the case was over, and then he just flew on up out of here. He got on his plane and he flew up out of here. The other thing that could keep you from getting a passport is, and let me make sure I get to it, is you committed a crime with your passport. You especially a drug crime. Just like a lot of us, we was making red money in the 90s, in the 80s. If you was the dude that was flying to Colombia and doing dastardly deeds and flying back to the States and you got caught, yeah, you could forget about ever seeing a passport. Now, I know none of you guys have gone through this, but we may know somebody that's gone through this. Hey, I was in the Fed, so I know plenty, <laughs> plenty of dudes that went through it.
So my point is, is that that is the one time that they look really look at your past to dictate whether they're going to give you a passport if you're a felon. If you use your passport to do crimes, let's say you were doing money laundering. I knew some, I met some, some young dudes, man. These dudes were like 19, 20 in the feds. These young kids discovered a way to take checks. It either was checks or make fake welfare checks. They were doing something, man. That was like fake government checks, like fake welfare checks, fake something. They had to open these kids. I mean, these were kids. They had opened up like inter, this. How I found about international banking. All if you're in the feds, I'm telling you, you're gonna learn all type of stuff about international, how money moves. And these kids had they had moved money from here to, from the states to this and that. They had so many account bounce of money around the world, and then they would fly to a certain place and pick up the money in cash. I didn't even know that there was such thing at this time period. I didn't know it was such thing as bank accounts that didn't have a name behind it. It was just the number. You guys, some of you guys know this. Like if you go to Switzerland or certain bank accounts in uh, uh, in Grand Cayman, you don't, you don't, it's not by a person's name. It's like 15 digits. And if you know the 15 digits, then you can access the bank account. But if you don't know the 15 digits, you can't get into the bank account. I learned that through these kids in the feds, man. <laughs> kid you and i'm like what so yeah man we had our bank accounts all set up and so these dudes were getting money by making fake checks and then like flipping the fake job how they were doing it man but my point is they will never get a, a passport again <laughs> because they were using their passport in the process of a crime it was a tool of their crime so they won't be eligible for a passport ever again and we may know a uncle or a cousin or or a, a female friend, whatever it may be, that that they did this. That's how that's the other way that as a felon, you won't be able to get your passport. But 90 outside of this being on house arrest warrants in the middle of a case or probation in parole or a person that have access to their uh, to their uh used it in the, the passport in the middle of a crime, over 95% of all felons are eligible to get their passport. It's crazy. They took your voter rights, <laughs> but, but they, didn't, they didn't take your right to get a passport. <laughs> I, ne I never understood that one. I never understood that. I would sit back and weigh in like, okay, his right to vote or a passport to build a new life in another world another country i would think you would take the passport away and the right to vote be like eh. these people said you can you we're gonna take your right to vote and, but you can have your passport felons i never got it but hey it works hey it works for me it works for me let's see go in these comments i know i've, I've got to hit a super chat real quick let me go hit this brother super chat and in the building Thank you, Anthony. Anthony said, I'm on my way to Europe in a few weeks, man. I'm, I'm happy for you, man. Keep me posted on what where you're going, what you're doing, man. I might have want to have you on the channel to uh, interview you, man. And I mean, in all sincerity, once you get over there, keep us posted because, you know, we like to have boots on the ground giving us information. Shout out to you, brother. Felicia letting the brothers know that the cash app or the super chat. Thank you very much for supporting the channel, guys. Definitely. Thank you very much, Felicia. I will be on this Sabado, this Saturday, this Saturday evening. I will be on a coach, a kosher, let me get it right. Kosher clinicians channel this weekend. We're going to be talking about uh, Afro-Colombians, Afro, uh, Afro uh, Latinas. We're going to be talking about Latin women. We're going to talk about relationships with Latin women, all that good stuff. So we're going to be on his channel. This weekend, fellas, this Saturday, this up and coming Saturday, I put the link in our community so you guys can check it out. So this Saturday, Eastern, at like 830 Eastern, we're going to, I'm going to be on his channel and we're going to be chopping it up, talking about this particular topic with the mamacitas. Oh, yeah. We're going to have fun on that one. Got Richie Mack in the building. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Richie. Yeah. Good people. 
Can you say sacrifice Yellis? <laughs> yeah, Jeff, Jeff saw it all. <laughs> but you know what? I'm going to tell you something on all sincerity. That's what makes Jeffrey and I so close as, as family members, the closest among us two. Because Jeffrey is a sacrifice dude. In order what? Yeah, those are the mics that I'm getting. Yeah, those are the mic. In order to, to, to do what I need to do, sacrifice must be made. In order to get those microphones, those sheer microphones, absolutely correct. We're going to get the other uh, short ones, not the long ones. We're going to look, see. Kevin had the long one, but there's some shorter versions that they have that that, that are two fifty a piece and are really nice microphones. And so, you know, me and Andre are always sharing the mic, and I was like, "Hey, we've been doing this long enough. Why should I just went and order some mics?" So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. Order the new mics. We're going to get the soundboard. Once I get a soundboard, like I'm like I'm the lead attorney, I'm gonna get on y'all last nerve with sound effects. I'm be clicking everything, gunshots, police sirens, all that. I'm going to get on your last nerve. They should have never gave Andre a soundboard. That's going to happen. Look at Dorothy Lee's baby right now. I know, right? Look at Dorothy Lee's baby. Look. What do you to talk about Dorothy baby so bad? Dorothy kid, look at Dorothy kids. <laughs> See, Jeffrey, right? They did. They used to talk about my mom, man. Oh, look at mm, Dorothy kids and her kids. Oh, my Lord, Dorothy and her kids. Good Lord, I, mm, it ain't one that ain't dead yet, all of them. Mm, uh, uh. Oh, and, and then, you know, our family, church family, so you know how church people talk. Mm, they, they all need Jesus. That's what they need. They all need Jesus. Ain't nobody came to the house and prayed for us, but we all need Jesus. But it's all right. We ain't mad at you. Y'all stay in Detroit. And <laughs> Me and Jeffrey, we'll take care of this. All right, public speaking. Uh, damn, Andre, I wonder how Andre thinks uh, <laughs> thinks you're a catchy. <laughs> you're funny, brother. I like that. Uh, they caught the vapors. Yep. <laughs> oh, shout out to Biz Mom, man. That's another brother I miss. Yep, shout out to Biz Mom, man. Nobody beats the Biz to this day. All right. Always supporting, always a great human being. That's what's up, brother. Yeah, man, they look good, dude. Good dude. Oh, how was Jesse Jesse Jackson? See, I'm dipping. I'm dipping in conversations. If any of us uh, does not forgive someone who has offended them, then God will not uh, forgive us either. Mark eleven twenty six. Absolutely correct, brethren. Thank you very much for that scripture. Thank you for sharing that. Anthony says, always tell uh, uh, Babaton and Mad and the Mad Bus Driver everything is listening. Everything is listening, included the, the haters. Oh, everybody's listening, including the haters. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Oh, we're about to get into it. I'm glad that you mentioned that one. That's the next one that we're going to talk about. I-R-S. Yeah, I said it. The IRS is the next way in which a person can be have your tax your uh, your passport revoked or your application denied. But the one thing about the IRS, it has a threshold, just like child support. The IRS's threshold is if you owe more than <coughs> excuse me in my cough. <clears throat> if you owe more than fifty five thousand dollars that's kind of high if you owe more than fifty five thousand dollars whether you were a businessman and things didn't work out but you still owe high taxes or if you just didn't pay taxes for years and you just didn't file and do what you need to do or you didn't set up a, a payment plan the irs says once you hit that fifty five thousand threshold you can forget about that passport play it <laughs> until you get under that fifty five thousand so if you owe ten thousand, you still safe. If you owe twenty thousand, even thirty thousand, you still kind of safe. Forty thousand, you you lie. Right. Forty five thousand, IRS like, all right, all right. You think we playing? Fifty thousand, IRS like a year. Let me let me talk to him. He don't realize he about to lose his passport. Fifty five thousand, forget about it. You can forget about it until until you get under that threshold. And what the IRS says by getting under that threshold is setting up a payment plan to be able to get up under that threshold or setting up 
to where they say, listen, you owe 55. If you give us 35, we'll wipe your slate clean. Or if you give us 45 or whatever the number may be, 47, we'll wipe your slate clean. But you have to make some type of arrangements with the IRS. You can't just sit back and say, oh, man, they're going to get my passport. To do call them. People, call them. They're willing to work with you. That's what I read in the, in the headlines and read on the IRS website. They are willing to work with you. They don't want to take your passport. They want the money. <laughs> what can they do with their passport? Nothing. They need the money. Joe Biden, old, old grandpa, Paul, Joe Biden needs the money. So at the end of the day, make sure that you don't hit that 55,000 threshold, okay? That's with the IRS. Most people don't know that. I didn't know that. I didn't know that till today. I knew that the IRS could hold you back, but I never knew that they had a threshold. And I went to their website and I actually read it. And let me see if I actually have that pulled up. Who am I to not share the knowledge? Let's see. Is it the passport? U.S. government passport statement revokes. Let me see, because I thought I had it. Yeah, I already read that part. I've got a lot of windows that are open that I've opened to. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Let me go. Let me go ahead and share that screen with you. I do have the one with the IRS. Let me unshare this one. Let me share the IRS. Yeah, there we go. All right. Sh knowledge. Sharing the knowledge. Okay. Right there. Let's go to this one. We're going to go through it real quick. Uh, what happens when the IRS takes away your passport for severe, and they call it severe tax debt? Severe tax debt. And when you scroll down, it says, who qualifies for severe, severely delinquent tax debt? It's one thing to have tax debt or owe some back taxes. That's one thing. But when it's seriously delinquent, that's another thing. It says right here, it says the IRS defines seriously delinquent tax debt as unpaid, legally enforced federal tax debt totaling more than $55,000 that remain after the IRS pursued all collection options such as levies or try to uh, collect the debt. And th what they mean by that is this, guys. We're going to come back to this in a second. What they mean by this is the IRS said we've already sent out all the letters. We have contacted your job and we put a lien on your on your on your on your paycheck we put liens on your bank account we've done everything after they've done all that and you still owe fifty five thousand. the next thing that they're, <laughs> that they're coming for is your passport that's what they're saying right there they said we've done all we've sent out the letters the information everything we've given him or her all the chances to stay or get up under that 55 and since you have ignored all our efforts of putting a lien on your paycheck, uh, putting a putting a stop on your on your bank account or freezing your bank account, everything we've tried to do to help you take care of this with payment plan, you've ignored. Next thing in line is your passport. That's what the IRS is saying. The next thing in line that we're going to take is your passport. All right. So how do I know if I have seriously delinquent tax? So how do you know? He said, you'll, it says, you'll go, uh, you'll get a, a CP508C notice from the IRS. In other words, the last mailing address that you gave the IRS, they are going to be using that to reach out to you. And they're going to send you this form. It says that it is important that you open the letter right away. It will tell you why you received the letter and what steps you can take to resolve your debt. 
it is extremely important that your address or that you address, sorry, it is extremely important that you address the situation quickly. Now, they said, also remember, scammers are going to try to send out these type of letters to you, too. So don't get fooled by that. But for the most part, this is the, the letter that the IRS sends out to individuals. This is their first step is the CP508C notice. And I went to the IRS website and they actually sent directly to their website. And they said this. It says the IRS will not send out certain debt, uh, debt sorry, not debt, debt uh, situations to the State Department, including taxpayers who are in bankruptcy. The IRS won't send out uh information to those or letters to those who are victims of uh tax related uh identity theft so forth so forth so forth what do i do uh what do you do if your passport has been denied or revoked because of seriously delinquent taxes here's what the irs is saying you can fix the issue by paying all of your debt a setting up an irs payment plan b or getting offered a compromise C or other options. The IRS will revise your, your certification or your certification to be able to get a passport if you pay your debt, like they just said, uh, or your, your tax debt is legally unenforced, B, your tax debt is not seriously delinquent. In other words, we already said seriously delinquent, is that 55,000 or your certification is incorrect. In other words, hey, some mistakes have been made as far as paperwork, our bad, said the IRS, we'll get you back on track with your, with your paperwork. Keep in mind, paying your tax bill to less than 55,000 does not automatically reverse your certification. You also have to set up an agreement with the IRS to get back into good standing. This means initiating a payment plan. In other words, in other words, let's say you got, uh, let's say you owe 50, 57,000. And of that 57,000, you finally paid off 2,000 and now you're under 55. You, you paid 3,000 off. Now you owe 54,000, right? The IRS says, hold up, wait a minute. You still owe us 54,000. We need to set up a payment plan for the other 54000 or whatever balance you got left. So they said, get under the threshold of the 55000 Now set up a payment plan for the rest of what you owe us. And now while you're in the middle of your payment plan, doesn't have to be after, you can apply for your, you can apply for your passport. That's how the IRS works when it comes to that. Uh, hey, Dre, looking forward to meeting you soon. All right, Sherwin. Uh, uh, what's the weather like in Cali during this year? Cali is Cali is like Tampa. It's basically the same weather year round. Cali, our nights are getting a lot, a little cooler, which is nice. Nice and cool. So it's like, uh, and the nights is like 68, 70, really nice. During the day, it's in, it's like in maybe like 80, 83. So it's not too, too hot. Uh, like over the last week, we've been getting a few hot days, like 87s, but we haven't gotten like before. When I first got here, Cali was getting like 90s, but but it's been global warming. <laughs> it, it, it's been impacted where other countries, weather has been impacted, ours has been impacted too. So now it's starting to get a little cooler in Cali when it wasn't like that. So the weather is just right, man. So if you're going to be coming down here for the concert, for the, for the, uh, for the Black Festival, the Petronio Alvarez Festival and be here at night for the concert. You you're coming at a good time in August. That cool breeze is just right. The weather is just right. So can't complain about that at all. Uh, OK, Glassdoor says, or if you owe child support, we already hit child support. We already said if, if you owe child support over the threshold or whatever the ever state it is, like if your state of Indiana says your threshold is a thousand, get up under that thousand, you can get your passport. If you are in Texas and they say your threshold is two thousand dollars, get under the two thousand dollar threshold of owing child support and you can get your passport. And my uncle who's in here now, he is a, a perfect example of a person that literally did that in the state of Michigan. All right. 
Uh, shout out to the glass of beer. Okay, uh, Bruce says, I got my passport uh, completed today. Uh, I thought my I thought my pass was going to be a problem. Nope, no, 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 <laughs> no. And that and that's why I, and that's why I give my story, guys. Shout out to Dre again. Shout out to you, Bruce. Thank you again for the for the uh, donation. Uh, and no shorties. Oh man, you about to do it just like me, man. And what I suggest to you guys, man, some of you guys that got shorties, I'm gonna uh, actually do a video. I'm trying to get some fathers uh, on because I want to do a. a, a a video called passport and parenting because i really think that it's important that moms and dads get a copy of the of the kids passports let the kids get their passport your kid your shorty 10 years old you know in 10 years they'll be they'll be 20 so between that time period they may have had a trip or something that they want to go on to or that you may want to take them to and you you'll be glad that that you and the parent or you know your co-parent y'all both got the the passport for your shorty plus the extra form of identification Shout out to Professor Omar Profe. Okay, Ant says uh, you can take your application uh, to the closest passport office uh, taking applications. Yes, usually it's the post office. <laughs> it is. It is. I, I don't know anybody that went in anywhere else but the post office. I, I know I did. It may be a passport uh, office like, like uh, Anthony may be saying, but I just... I just went to the post office because I knew that's where you went. Uh, you would get your passport uh, the same. Oh, you go to get your passport the same day. Okay, cool. That's good information. So you may want to find out. Let's go back to his statement, to Anthony's statement. You may want to find out in your state where the closest passport office is located. Located. If you can get it the same day, that's gravy. All right. Already done mine. That's what's up. Congratulations, man. Yeah, congratulations on getting your passport, man. Whew, it's like having a child, like my, my baby. Welcome to the family. And if the country uh, you want to go to turns you down uh, for coming there, uh, there are countries be, uh, coming to their country because you are American with a criminal record. There are, there are countries that can do that, even though, uh, even though I, you know, my past has never held me up. He's correct. There are countries that can sit back and say, well, we don't want to deal with you because, you, hey, you you ain't do right. <laughs> so there are countries that can say that even though you have your passport. I haven't been to any. I haven't had any countries slow me down or reject me or anything like that. But usually it's kind of like if you try to get a job or credit or something or try to try buy get credit for a house or something. Uh, usually it works like that. Okay, I said, wow, that's that's a good one. Um, uh, committing the crime while traveling with the passport. Yeah, it will amaze you how many people are doing that one. I mean, just just think about. Okay, think about the television show Locked Up Abroad. Are those people locked up? Yes. Did they get there with the American passport? Yes. What do you think is going to happen when they get back? That's my point. That's my point. Yeah. He said Luxembourg is one of them. See, good, good, good information, guys. Thanks for sharing. All right. Thank you for the super chat, brother. He said, Drizzy Dre, I appreciate you for continuing the journey uh, in adult education on your terms. Yes. I got five. Uh, wait a minute. He said, "I got five on it." He said, "I got five on it because shout out to uh to the Yay area, San Francisco. I got five on it, uh because uh I'm five subscribers from the mighty three hundred. Hey, I, I've been watching your channel, man. You've been doing it, man. You have been doing it. Yes, yes, yes. You are, man. Keep doing it. Keep bringing it. Bring that information, man, on how to." understand and be more proficient in espanol all right thank you felicia all right guys okay got a question bruce uh bruce says uh andre do you feel uh 
some type of way about uh, Chet's disposal. No, no. Man, listen, I'm going to get Chad on the show. What are you talking about? I've been watching Chet's episode. Me and Andre have been watching them. I love it. I love it when one of us go to a destination that others of us are actually looking to go to. None of us have the, you know, I, I don't want none of us to, to sit back and compete as far as like, I'm the, I'm the, 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 the man of the frontier. No, man. I love it, man. We I watched this episode when he went to the beach. And then I went to the, watch the episode when he was doing the, like the walking street at night and he went had some drinks and he met the little female from uh from she was Swiss, she was a Swiss female but she lived in Canada and then he met the other brother from Canada. Yeah. I love that. Shout out to Chet and the Fed. If anybody uh hey Felicia, if you get a chance, put Chet and the Fed's uh in effects a uh, channel uh in the stream for guys to subscribe and, and, and plus he he's like ace you know they do long documentary type videos so you can sit back for 45 minutes 50 minutes <laughs> and watch the journey go go on and they actually give you some good footage and some good information so yeah and i, I like the fact that now i know from watching chat video how many people in portugal speak speak english it is amazing. He he was saying he said the three languages in Portugal are Portuguese, French, number two, and English is number three language. We wouldn't have learned that without Chet being boots on the ground. So yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited for what he's going to be bringing. He said he's going to be going from uh, Portugal to Spain, which is right next door, and then he's going to hit uh, the UK. So yeah, keep it going, Chet. Oh uh, yeah, you know what? I'm trying to figure out what camera he's been using. It, it was it for a second. I thought it was the Osmo. I bought a, a camera uh, that you suggested, Osmo Pocket. Shout out to the Osmo. We got the Osmo up there, right here. Let's see. We still got the Osmo up here. Oh, here we go. We haven't used it in forever. Our Osmo Pocket, the original one. See, some of you guys got the. Got the Osmo Pocket Classic. We just got the original one. And this one is so old. It's old, old. It, it, oh, the battery's dead. Okay. <laughs> That's how old that one is. Now we have the... Now we use the Insta360, the 360-degree camera that shows you everything. You don't even have to aim because everything around you is shown. So we have that that we use and I, I love the insta 360 because it comes apart like a puzzle that's the, the little red part is the battery at the bottom and then it just comes so if you don't want to use the 360 you just take it apart like that and you can grab the straightforward lens you take the straightforward lens like if you want to put it in selfie mode to where you can see yourself you just put it together like that just like a puzzle just pop it together and then you just pop the battery back on the bottom, the red battery. And there you go. You turn the camera on. And there you go. Let's see. Boom. Now I'm looking at you guys looking at me. So that's what we have. And this is the 360 lens. And this is the regular lens. And that's why we like this one, because you kind of like have the best of both worlds for a good price. But don't get me wrong, this one right here built built Love Crossing Borders channel. The Osmo, you cannot go wrong with that Osmo pocket at all. Plus the size, look at look how skinny that is. You just stick it in your pocket or wherever you want to put it. It spins around forward, it spins around back, and the stable it did the bounce, the stabilizer. It is smooth as butter, smooth. You can have a limp. In the Osmo pocket, gonna make it seem like you just walk smooth as can be. That's one thing I like about the stabilizer of the Osmo. Oh, yeah. All right, that DJI uh, Pocket 2 is dope. Yeah, see, this is the one. I like that too, too. And then, the, then Insta 360 came out just recently. With their version of the 360 Osmo. So it's like, it looks like the Osmo, but it's a 360 version. Like, okay, all right. 
I guess competition is deep. Hey, Andre, hope you're doing good. Hey, hey Joshua, hope you're doing good and everything's po in positive energy. Yes, yes, yes. We're doing good over here, man. I can't complain. Can't complain. We um, The dollar is doing great right now. The dollar is at like $4 and four dollars and fifty cents think about it every dollar that that i make every dollar that you would make if you lived here is worth four dollars and fifty cents gas here is still like three dollars and thirty cents i mean two dollars and thirty cents um andre buys all the groceries <laughs> so i mean i go to the grocery store a lot too but andre kind of like she knows all the deal you know women they, they know how to get all the good deals but I don't, I don't I'm like, hey, it's all a good deal to me. I'm paying four dollars if and I'm getting four dollars plus for a dollar. So it's a great that's another thing that makes it so good to, to travel to Colombia at this time period. You're gonna get a bang for your buck for your dollar. It's crazy. Okay, uh, we are going around uh the world starting during uh starting in Vietnam. All right, that's what's up. Then Italy, France, Greece, Portugal, Morocco. We're doing, we, Andre and I are excited because what we're going to do when we go there next year, we'll be there for four months. So you guys are going to see us there for four months. What we're doing is the trains. We can't wait to do trains in Sweden, Switzerland. We can't wait to do trains in France and Italy. So we're excited. We're so excited. And she's got family over there. And so we're excited about that whole experience. It's like for 500 bucks, you get 10 countries. Oh, man, we're, we're ready. We're ready to go. So Chet, Chet didn't do anything but help motivate us. Like, what? Do we really need to wait till next year? So, yeah, we're ready. Yeah, that Osmo Pocket, man, that's the one. If you guys ever want a starter camera, I would say the Osmo 2, of course, because you guys, because the Osmo 2 is is, up, is the updated version. But, yeah, I'm definitely with you guys in regards to that. Uh, that was hard to find here. <laughs> yeah, that camera. Yeah. Chet's women. I, I didn't get that one, but Chess always has some cute, cute women, some beautiful women in his in his videos. Uh, Portugal is the bomb. Okay, cool. Thank you for letting us know because yeah, that's that's our next uh next little destination where we're going to be living. We're excited about that. We're going to buy property here, but we're going to be living in Portugal, 2024. Uh. Andre, we have a problem. Uh, Omar message is not getting through the chat. I haven't blocked him. I'm I'm seeing I'm I'm seeing his message. Let me let me see something. Let me see if I can if I can. He's not hidden. I can okay. I could I can see him here. I just showed him on the screen. But but you can't see it in the in the is it better now? Something ad is something odd is going on. Someone deleted my comment. If okay, <coughs> excuse me. If I did it by mistake, let me know. I, I know I haven't deleted it, but but repost your comment if so so we can see it to make sure that you're visible. Ten or four, or ten four or ten four. Okay, we're talking to Felicia. Okay, cool. All right, let's get back to the list. So we're talking about the felons. We're talking about IRS. Oh, here's another one that could keep you from getting your passport. Now, this one might not get your passport revoked, but it can keep you from getting your passport renewed, and it can keep you from getting your pass or allowing you to use your passport. Now, again. It won't get your passport revoked, but you won't be able to use your passport 
or get your passport renewed because of this. You have an outstanding loan from the government, from the U.S. Embassy. You have an outstanding loan from the U.S. Embassy. Let's say you went to Medellin. Yeah, I'm going to put it on Medellin. You found you a nice chica. And you woke up four days later. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Passport gone, computer gone, watches, money, everything gone. You stranded. You stranded. Now, let's say you got a one-way ticket. You need to get a round-trip ticket. You contact the U.S. Embassy. What they do, they give you a few dollars to make it to the, uh, uh, the airport. They give you a few dollars to have something to eat. They give you a few dollars to buy a plane ticket. And they make sure that you get a temporary passport. You make it back home. You happy to be back home in the States, but you forgot about the few dollars, maybe that $150, $200 the U.S. government and the embassy gave you to make it back home. Until you pay that back, you can't travel nowhere. They ain't going to take your passport, but they ain't going to stamp your passport. If you're looking to get your passport renewed, it ain't going to get renewed until you pay that $200 back. So even though it's not common that this happens, it is something that we need to be aware of as, as guys and ladies that use passports. We need to be aware of, of the, uh, need to be aware of this. Let me know if everything is, is showing up, uh, uh, Don Omar, but we need to be aware of this. <laughs> He says, uh, Felicia says, Andrea, he says, I still don't see a certain comment about booking, uh, about booking.com, Andre. I don't see anything about booking.com either. I didn't see a booking. That... <coughs> Excuse me, guys. Uh, repost, repost. If anybody, if you, is whoever put a booking.com in there, Make sure you repost it so, so we can share the information with everybody else. You aren't trying to send uh you aren't trying to send a link or anything possible. Uh band word or band words, are you? Okay, I see you guys are trying to help help each other out in regards to this. He's right. That happened to my friend. He was stuck in London with a one-way ticket. They confiscated his passport. Yep. Until you get ready, until you pay that little money back that you, you know, they looked out for you and got you back home to the States. You got to go ahead and uh, pay, pay the government back. And then you get your passport back. It's no big deal. But don't think that you about to just forget about the government and just all of a sudden, okay, it's cool. Oh, it ain't cool. <laughs> Especially if it's only a couple hundred dollars to get you back home or maybe like, let's say it was a thousand dollars because they bought you a ticket back home. Uh, in the last moment, they got you a ticket back home. Either way, dude, go ahead and pay the government back so you can get your passport back. So we talked about the IRS. We talked about the child support. We talked about the national threat. We talked about making sure your kids get a passport. If they're under 16, they have to go through you. Um, we also talked about Oh, make sure that you also put in. <laughs> Bruce said, "I'm skipping Medi I'm skipping uh, Medellin for Portugal." I am. You know what? After looking at Czech videos, I don't blame you, man. Ain't nothing but Brazil in Portugal. Ain't nothing but but. Bra you see how many sisters from Africa in Portugal? Man, listen, I'm looking at them videos like. I'm, I'm thinking I'm in Cali because, you know, Cali here down here, there's nothing but sisters. I'm thinking I'm looking at check videos. Ain't nothing but sisters walking through there, brothers and sisters walking through there. Now, don't mind you, majority of the, the white, super pale people that's down there, too. But I was surprised to see the amount of brothers and sisters that was walking around. I was like, wow, it must be like it's got to be like 60, 30. I mean, 70, 30. OK, cool.
Now, when did the sisters from the States creeping down there to Portugal? Okay, so make sure that when you do fill out your passport information, you put in the right information on your application because that can keep you from getting to uh <laughs> keep you from getting to the uh getting your passport processed your application just had the wrong information or you didn't go to cvs or wall walgreen and get your or somewhere professional to get your passport photo and if the photo is blurry or if you're smiling or if you have glasses on and you shouldn't have your glasses on, that could get your application rejected and you'd have to submit another application just because you had your glasses on and you should have your glasses off for your passport photo. So remember that. Do not make any mistakes when it comes to the application. Uh, <laughs> okay, here we go. He says, I'm skipping uh, everything uh, going to East Europe, Eastern Europe uh, might not come back. Snow Bunny hashtag. <laughs> uh, Charles, here goes Charles. Uh, now nah, I want white Portuguese women. <laughs> okay, guys. Battle Royale is on. He said, hey, he said, I'm the same way, brother. He said, I love that Snow Bunny too. Enjoy yourself, brothers. Enjoy yourself. I saw, I saw some beautiful women on this video, man. I was like, okay. All right, all right. Then we saw some pale. It's, it's crazy. When you haven't been around white people in, in, in five years like I haven't, to sit back and see check and effect video and see white, white people is like, wow, okay. The actress off of uh, NIC or, or NCIS LA with LL Cool J, I know which one you're talking about, is from Portugal. She is bad. I'm gonna have to look up, look, look the uh, cast up. Thank for letting me know that, brother. I look at the cast later on. Thank you for letting me. Thank you for sharing that. All right, here we go. Let me make sure I covered everything in regards to your passport and can you get it? We covered child support. We covered minors. We covered uh, national threats. We covered uh, your passport was re revoked. Obtained. Oh. There is another thing that you that could cause your passport to actually be taken away or revoked. And I know most guys aren't uh, do this, but this is one on the list. A passport can be revoked because you obtained it illegally or it's a fake passport. We always see that on the movies. Uh also uh you misuse the passport. In other words, the the photo the photo on your passport's got a scratch on it or 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 some damage on the photo part or on that page, that can cause them to say, you know what, you need to get another passport, which is easy. It's not that they're trying to take your passport. It's just that something might be damaged to your to your passport. Also, here's a good one. Uh, another thing to get your passport, re your passport revoked or taken away is if you have renounced your citizenship for the United States, you know that last year was a record number of individuals that renounced their the U.S. citizenship over 5,000 people. I think almost 6,000 people revoked their national citizenship uh, with the with the IRS. I mean, with the, with the United States. And what you have to do is crazy. I looked it up too, right? In order to, to just give up on your U.S. citizenship, I'm done. I'm living in another country. I've been living here for 20 years. I'm done with the U.S. What uh what they do is you have to have file at least file your taxes for five years at least filed, uh you have to pay I forgot the fee it's like a I forgot what amount I won't even lie about the amount it's not expensive is but it's a fee that you pay like two thousand dollars I'm just guessing uh two thousand dollars and then you officially like wipe your hands United States turn your passport in it's done. Oh, her name is Cat Stevenson. Okay, cool. Let's let's look up Cat Stevenson. Let's see what Cat working with. Let's look up Miss Cat Stevenson. But yeah, that is that is what uh will cause you to get your passport in CIS, Los Angeles. images 
No, maybe I'm looking at the wrong. Wait a minute. Okay, I'm on the wrong. I'm on the right one. Let's see. Let's see, actress. Let me put in actress. He says, Grace, is it is it Cat Stevenson or Grace? Grace Stevenson. Yeah, from NCIS uh, Los Angeles. Let's see. See if I can get it pulled up for us. Thank you for your patience. Okay, let's let's pull up for the live stream. Share the screen. Okay, right here on the right hand side is Grace Stevenson of NCIS Los Angeles. If this is who you guys are talking about, she's from Portugal. Let me know. And I could I could see her passing for that. I can see her passing for Portuguese. Says I ain't gonna lie, my mouth uh hit that uh blah 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 flow when Chet's put the camera on him. Uh, cast the past the train interest and ask them how to get to the train. Yeah, <coughs> yeah. See, <laughs> see, see. Ace and Ace and uh, Chet be thinking they slick. Ace like that. Chet's like that. Uh, Barber World. He's like that. Hey, uh. uh how do you get to the yellow bananas? Man, <laughs> you don't care nothing about them yellow bananas. You're just trying to get that camera footage. I ain't mad at you, player. We appreciate you. Yeah, so if you guys get a chance, check out Chet's latest videos, the last, like, two or three videos that he's been there since uh, since he's been there over, like, like, the last week. But you know how you, you as YouTubers do. Ch for as far as we know, Chet is in Spain right now, and his videos that he's dropping are, you know, he's just dropping them as far as letting us know that he's in Portugal. Uh, if you make a mistake, you actually, uh, and you actually, you actually do your part, then that's all. That's all you can do and should do. Nobody's perfect. Absolutely, Charles. I mean, absolutely, Bruce. Uh, when we hit that scene, it's our truth. It's our truth they appreciate. Yes, that's true. That is true, brethren. You can run out of pages on your passport and get more pages added at the embassy. Great. I'm glad that you said that, glass of beer. I'm really glad that you said that because a lot of guys don't know that that you can run out of stamps and you can get more pages. So don't feel like, oh, man, I'm stranded because of the stamps, because I've traveled to so many places in Europe and blah, blah, blah. So I ran out of stamps or wrote places where they can stamp my passport. You can actually get your get more pages uh, for your stamp 
I mean, for your passport at the embassy. He's absolutely correct. It is not one thing about I noticed this because <laughs> I've learned a lot about about passports, not even from my experience, from how many times Ace has lost his passport. Hey, Dre, what? I lost my passport again, again. So at the end of the day, I've got a chance to realize that no matter where you are, whether you're in Mexico, whether you're in Vietnam, wherever, it's not hard to get another copy, another copy of your passport or get more pages to your passport. So shout out to Glass of Beer for letting us know that uh, uh, or just reminding us of that for those that are running out of pages on your passport that you still can get more pages if you're in another country. Another thing, if you have a child in another country, and Andre and I have already found out about this, if you have a child in another country and you want your child, such as Taylor made Dreams, you want your child to have a passport, all you need to have is the child's basic information, even if they're a baby, uh, proof that you are the father. That's why you want to get the blood test done, not just because the proof that I'm that baby's pappy, but also they want proof that you are the actual uh, father of that child and not just claiming a child that's not an American citizen. It has to have American DNA in its blood, which is from you. And once they prove that that child is an American, and you can go to the embassy and they'll, they'll actually mail your child's passport while it's a baby to where you are. So it's even it's easy for your child that's born in another country to get their passports. Andre and I found out about that. Uh, we actually talked to a, an attorney about it. So, yeah. All right, guys, we've been here two hours, 18 minutes. We've been talking about passports. And I think we're almost done with this bottle. Oh, we're not. <laughs> That means I will not be I'll, be, I'll be finishing this bottle of wine. Uh, oh, not next week, because next week you see, you see, I'm, I'm drinking the dark wine and you do not drink dark wine with veneers. But next week, Andre and I are getting the Hashi Tashi 3000 veneers. So we're excited about getting the new veneers. Uh, our dentist, who is our sponsor to our channel. She is opening up her new office, so we're going to let you guys see the office, the same dentist that we take you guys to when you come down here. And you're talking about inexpensive for a teeth cleaning, whitening, and veneers. And she does so much work with Americans that she actually opened up a new, down the street a new branch of her dentistry for nothing but English-speaking Americans. It is laid out. We went in there. We was like, okay. I mean, it was, it's beautiful. The, the regular office is nice. But the office for the Americans, I'm like, oh, so you doing all this for these old raggedy Americans? Oh, okay. So we're going to be doing video footage. We're going to do uh, some testimonies of guys that have gotten their teeth done by her. Uh, I, I know guys that came in and thought that, well, I'm going to get my teeth clean. And they walked out with brand new veneers. I mean, your teeth looking good. Like, your teeth look as good, as, look better than mine. So my point is, this would be my last time enjoying the, the dark wine for a while because we're going to have the new veneers. And we are so, so excited about those, the, about getting the veneers and everything. And uh, we're also excited about her being a sponsor of the channel so you guys are going to see commercials that are going to run on here on the show because she really does good work and she does look out for us u.s citizens to where you can feel comfortable and most of you guys that come down here you know i usually take you <laughs> usually take you to the dentist's office anyway you be like i got a dental appointment with the, with the lady with your, with your dentist and i'm like okay cool what time your appointment uh it's about 12 30 and i'm like i ain't doing nothing i take you <laughs> and so usually I take you guys to the dentist's office anyway. And so uh, they're going to be opening up the new branch this uh, or the new offices for U.S. citizens. You got my boy Josh there. Josh is from Florida. He's an English speaker. So as soon as you walk through the door, Josh is there like, what's up? Cool, dude. Right. So you're going to see him on the commercials. And Josh is a, 
uh, English speaker. And like I said, the dentist office is it's set up better than, than most dentist offices in the States. It's really, really nice, really nice. So we're excited about about that. So if you're interested in getting your teeth done here in Colombia, and I'm telling you, man, it's, these, these brothers be leaving here with teeth looking. I mean, I'll be seeing some brothers with just some regular teeth come through here, come through here. Man, they leave here in a day or two. And, and plus, they do everything the same day, right? <laughs> so, so, man, they leave here a day or two. Brand new smiles. Brothers that ain't smiled in 20 years. Walking around small, smiling all day long. And I ain't mad at them. I am not mad at them. Because you see how much I smile. All right. If you run out of pages, oh, oh we already did that one. Uh, I don't know. I'm mobile. Okay. Um, let me make sure I get the, all the comments. If you made a mistake, shout out to Bruce. Truth appreciated. Okay. So the passport card compared to the actual. Oh, that's a good, good statement. That's a good statement. Let me, let me see. Give me a second. I'm going to grab mine right here. My passport card and my passport. Let you guys see what he's talking about. Okay. Here we go. Let me see if I have my passport card. Driver's license, check. ID, check. Passport card. There we go. Got my passport card right here. So if you don't get your just regular uh, uh, ID, I mean, you're your regular, you have your regular passport. And if you throw in a couple of extra 20, 20, 20 bucks, you get your passport card as well. And so the difference between the two I notice is there's a different number for the passport card than the passport, uh, than your passport. Like my passport card starts with C I. I mean, it was C one, and my passport is like five eight. Yeah, five eight. So, go figure. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't understand why it's different like that. Everything else is the same about them, but even the numbers on the back are different. On the passport card, but I made I, I spent an extra few extra dollars and I got my passport card that I can keep in my wallet, which is just as valid. And I have my passport, my regular passport, like you guys have. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, subscribe to Bruce. All right, I ain't know Bruce had a channel. Man, let me go ahead and subscribe to Bruce. I'm gonna subscribe to Bruce tonight too. Let me see. Yeah, let me subscribe to Bruce right now. Bam. There we go, Bruce. And I clicked the notification bell so I could be notified for your videos. That means get to work, brother, on them videos. Because I'll be watching. Passport court only works for ID purposes. Yes, it is. For cru oh, thanks. Thanks for letting us let me know that, Don Omar. For cruises and for going into uh bordering countries via land, such as Mexico and Canada. There we go. I was wondering why I never used this. <laughs> okay, cool. And I've been on five cruises, so I see exactly what you're talking about. Because the average cruise, if you're not going overseas, it's more or less like or or crossing you outside of U.S. boundaries. 
it's usually just your birth show your birth certificate in your in your regular ID. Wow. The Hashitashi laptop <laughs> for the channel. Yeah, that Hashitashi 3000. All right, okay. Uh Sherwin, if you if okay, oh, Sherwin says uh if you if you a criminal record or if you have a criminal record, in other words, uh, a pa and a passport, you should check the country you want to visit if you will be granted entry. Absolutely correct. Uh, Canada restricts entry and you'll need uh, advanced permission to enter. I did not know that. The things we are learning this evening, ladies and gentlemen, if you have a record in the past, such as moi, you might not be able to get into Canada. I'm trying to. Wait a minute. I'm trying to think. Give me a second. Reason why I'm thinking because 9-11 changed everything for, me, for everybody. And I was I was messing with this chick in Toronto. <laughs> Don't judge me. When I was, last time I lived in Detroit, so I would drive up four one three hours and, and hang out in Toronto every weekend. I'm trying to think: was it the time period in which I was a? Uh... Wait a minute. I was free at that time period. Yeah, I think I think I did have a. a even though they may have changed the rules since then, of course. But I think that I actually was, uh, <laughs> I think I, 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 yeah, I did. I did have felonies when I was going to Canada. I did have, I, I, was, I was fresh out the feds, like two years out of the feds. I was, oh, she was fine. Mm. Mm, one of them, one of the pretty sisters with the with the green eyes. You know when you catch the sisters with the green eyes, you like, ugh, fine. She was a bus driver in Toronto. Mm. <sighs> All right, Dre, I'm back. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, they may have changed the rules since then. So I'll check into that. I'm glad that you mentioned it. Andre, are you not going live next Friday? <laughs> yes, I will be going live. It'll just be a different drink. <laughs> It'll be a different drink. Because we, we get our veneers like earlier that day anyway. So I'll be going live. Now, Andrea, she might not go live. Because we get our veneers. Check it out. We get our... She sleep. Or she not watching anyway anymore. We get our veneers that... No, we get our veneers removed Thursday. So we go back to our original teeth. Like the original. See, I don't get a shame. I, I don't care about my Michael Strahan gap. Because I plan on taking uh like pictures now and then pictures once the veneers are removed and then pictures with the new veneers anyway. So y'all gonna see all that anyway. But uh but uh Andrea, even though her this is the funny part, her teeth were nice before the veneers. That's the crazy part. She already had nice teeth. So it's like she didn't have all these gaps like me with gaps over here and gaps over here and gaps at the bottom. And then I got this big Michael Strahan gap in the middle. I was watching. The, it's kind of funny. I was watching my original video of this topic and I'm looking at my teeth like. Man, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at my own teeth like, so that was your mouth, huh, back then, huh? So you had all those gaps, huh, for real, for real? Dang. So, so, so I'm just, I ain't lying. I'm looking at the video from 2019. I'm looking like, ugh, ugh. All right, brother, get your teeth done. But, uh, 
So yeah, I'll be. But hey, next Friday, oh man, yeah, I gonna think I got a big ego. I'm be smiling on everything, 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 brand new. And these like the new Hashitashi three thousands. These are like a, uh, uh, I forgot what she called them. It's like a, is is like beyond porcelain. It's like more like a glass type of. Oh, oh. I'm going to get on your last nerve smiling. I'm going to get on your last nerve next week, boy. I know I'm, I know when you first get your teeth, you got you got a slight lisp because your tongue is trying to get used to. So fortunately, when I get my veneers back, my tongue is already used to how my teeth set. But I doubt it. I think it's going to take a couple of days for me to not speak with a lisp. Because when you first get your veneers, it's always a slight lisp because your tongue is trying to find its way and get developed and once it's good it takes like two or three days and you're good but man listen uh does she have an ig oh yeah yeah she does have an ig let me actually let me actually pull her ig up and then i'm going to put the put it in the in the comments because she's got tons of photos and i'm gonna say something some of y'all that came down here like me with some raggedy teeth. And y'all walk up out of here looking like movie stars. <laughs> I swear. Some of us have come down here. I, like, like I said, you ain't the only one that had the, the mouth that was looking like, ugh. Some of y'all brothers have come down here, Andre, I need my teeth done. And boy, she, one dude just recently, just recently, this dude was an inspiring rapper in Medellin. Andrea told me about it, uh, and she told Andrea just while we were just touring the uh, the uh, new spot. I'm hanging out with Josh. Andrea hanging out with Anna. Anna is the, is the doctor, and uh, I mean, or the dentist. And Anna said this dude came down with his teeth were like this, and she said she told him I can't do nothing with that. He said I got a music video shoot in three days. I got to have my teeth fixed. He said, that's why they stalled on a music shoot because the, the, my, uh, my director said, we can't do a music shoot, a video shoot with your teeth looking like that. And she said, you need braces. You need this, you need that. She said, I can't do nothing with your mouth. Think about a dude teeth. Like you born with your teeth like that all the way around. And he said, she, she told him, she said, if, if I do your teeth, you have to sign a waiver. You know how messed up your mouth, your mouth got to be <laughs> if your dentist need a waiver. I am not responsible for how your teeth might be after this. Your dentist need a waiver. Your mouth so messed up. I heard it all a waiver form. So, so what ended up happening? Let me pull this this information up for us too. And so, what ends up happening is he walked up out of there looking like a movie star. She said, she said, I was so nervous while I was doing his teeth. She said I had to take breaks because my nerves were so bad doing his doing his teeth to make sure that it was just right. She said, because I didn't want to make it look like it was too much teeth, but I didn't want to mess mess up the artistry. Cause it's like being an artist, the artistry of his veneers. And when it was all said and done, my man came up out of there looking like a superstar. Yep, let me pull up Anna's real quick and copy her url and i'm going to email it to myself so i could put it in the in the chat and she, and she has her phone number in the whatsapp and josh the brother from the states he answers your whatsapp so you don't have to feel like man i don't know i don't know spanish they ain't gonna understand me even if you wrote it in spanish or english and Josh had me roll and Josh say, Hey Dre, I and I thought Josh, you I thought Josh was was from Cali. 
Oh, I thought Josh was like fluent Spanish. Josh say, Dre, I came here. I ain't know a lick of Spanish. <laughs> he said, and I came here on vacation and never left. <laughs> he, he said, bro, I came here like I just want to, you know, nice little, you know, little month vacation. He said, man, I came to Colombia. He said, I ain't, I ain't leave. He said, I ain't been back home yet. <laughs> he said, that, that's how much he loved being here in Colombia. So let me get this this sent over to me, but uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, he a good dude, real good dude. So he's the one that responds to your to your WhatsApp uh, uh, email that you go or email or or, or I mean not not email but message or text that you're gonna send to her. And like I said, if you guys come down to get your teeth done, don't trip, man, because usually usually you guys get it you you get your appointment set up like on the, in the morning. I ain't doing nothing in the morning. I've already rec- I've already recorded for the other channels, and so it's more or less like, eh, what you up to, Dre? Nothing. I come pick you up, take you to the dentist's office. So I'll hang out at Anna's office, and then I'll like interview people and stuff like that. Let me actually send some photos too. Let me actually send some photos to my to my to my email in this email because I want to let you guys see some of the work that's done too. Because she really is good at what she does. I'm giving her the advertisement before the advertisement. And she had this one girl, one young lady in there. She was like part of like, she had just won like this beauty pageant. She's a beautiful woman too. Uh, And she just won this beauty pageant and she was, uh, she was there. Let me make sure I have everything. I'm trying to find my boys' photos. I can't find him, but I do have the young lady that was there. And this is the this is the office that you guys. I'm going. I'm going to send the pictures to myself, as well as the link. And this is the office. Her her old office, which she still has, but that one's for Spanish speakers. But she has a brand new one for for uh english speakers and americans and i was like you giving all this to the americans i'm like girl forget them I, this is where i want to get my teeth done <laughs> forget those americans all right let's see let's let me make sure i got that there we go Okay, let me download the photos. Yeah, she had changed. This, this young lady I'm telling you guys about, she had changed her clothes and and every. She was like Miss. She had the like the the just you know I'm just one Miss Universe outfit on, and she came straight to the dentist's office and had the most beautiful smile. Really nice young lady. Let me see if I if I make sure I got the other photos. So I got got her to take some pictures for me for thumbnails and things like that. <clears throat> but let me get this over to you guys in the comments. Here we go. The IG. Oh, I did send four, four photos. Okay, cool. I did send a lot of photos. I didn't realize that. Okay, cool. So, like I said, this is Anna. And this is her IG. I'm glad that somebody mentioned it. Let me put it in the comment section so you guys can go directly to her IG. Excuse me, guys, for the cough, especially into the microphone. Okay, let me see if I can pull up the photos of the of the young lady. Let me get those f- pulled up.
Let's see. Here we go. You know, go directly to my Gmail. Now. Let's see if I can pull these up in Gmail. See if they'll show on the screen. This is one of the photos. Let's see if it shows up. Let's see if it shows up. I don't know if that one's large enough or clear enough for you guys to see. So what I'll do is I'll 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 I'll, I'll go another route. I'll go another route. with the screen share so you guys can see the photos. Let us see. I'll go directly into my pictures. Oh yeah, in the download documents, there we go. Let me get a real clear, good picture. Okay, Andre, you're doing too much. Let's see. Not that one. Okay, let's try that one. I want to hold hold us too much on photos and everything. Let's cancel that one out and Let's go to screen share. Let's try that one. Okay, that's the young lady that was there. She, Like I said, she had changed clothes. She had just won a beauty pageant. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm. And she had just won a beauty pageant. And so she uh, was there to get work done even though she didn't need work done uh but she was just a sweetheart just a sweetheart and so that's the logo for the dentist dentist office back there say andre uh i have to move uh wait a minute who what i noticed they felicia talking uh i should wait until i move uh Oh, oh, should I wait until after I move to get a passport? No. Get your passport now. Now. Even if you have to use a family member's address on your passport for it to be delivered there. Get your passport now. Felicia, you've been watching too many live streams. You've been part of these live streams. All the live streams that you are part of are mainly travel live streams. You are the the woman that we all have been waiting to say i got my passport get it now 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 moving is just another excuse to kick it down the road that's all that it is it's just you know oh well i don't have it now because because you know i've got to move no felicia get your passport now queen get it now you deserve it you deserve it. All of these, all of us walking around here getting these passports and, and living our lives. Yes, you deserve it. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Let me see if I can pull up some more, some more photos. I think that's basically it. I had a bunch of photos, but it looks like I'm going through the ups and downs of getting it all pulled together. But you guys see the gist of what I'm what I'm talking about. Okay, Dre, Dre when you left the system, what was your first thought? My first, let me, let me sit back and think. My first thought are my thoughts that I still have. If you, and it's all in all sincerity. I can't believe it. There's a gospel song by Dorothy Norwood called 
somehow I made it. Through it all, God brought me through. Some of you may have know this song. It's, it's, it came out in the 80s. And uh, it said, I shed it tears down through the years, sometimes up, sometimes down. But through it all, God brought me through. And I still wake up in a dream state. I still wake up like, I look over at Andrea and I'm like, look at this gorgeous wife that spoils me so much. And I get to spoil her and I get to take her around the world with me. I get a chance to meet so many different people locally and internationally. So many guys that's, that's I mean, it's some guys that I know that I'm cool with this ball and out of control. I mean, some, some player, some international players. It, it's some everyday guys like you, like you guys that I get a chance to enjoy and meet and laugh with. I I still wake up like I did the first day. I kid you not. I was talking to, to somebody today during a consultation. And me and my man, I, and, and me and my man was talking, and I was like, I'm still trying to get my mind wrapped around when Andrea makes me a meal. Because I came down here at 50, and think about it, for 50 years, nobody made me anything but my mom. I never had a woman that made me a meal ever, brought a plate to me. Ever. A lot of brothers are like me. Sister, uh, Felicia, talk to your sisters, because y'all think that everybody cooking. Not everybody's cooking. And if you're cooking, y'all don't even bring the plate. Y'all cook the meal and just be like, you can, you got legs, make your own plate. Y'all don't make a plate for your man when at the at the family barbecue. You don't make a plate for him. You don't make him a drink. None of that. So I've only been doing this for five years. So for 50 years, I wasn't used to none of this. So I'm still scratching my head like, <coughs> like Andre made me a nice little salmon. With noodles today, oh, man, you thought it was from a restaurant. Oh, it was good. This is on her way to the gym. This is on her way. How many sisters in the States or ladies or women in the States you know, well, I'm on my way to the gym, but let me make sure my man ate. I man, listen. Bruce, you just don't know. I'm still in my first thought. <laughs> Like, I can't believe it. It's, it. This can't be real. This cannot be real. Man, if I'd have known about this, I would have left the United States at 19. Oh, and I, I'm not saying that flippantly. I would have left the I would have left the United States with just a few, few thousand dollars. Man, I would have rather had worked on a barge working my way up. I would have rather had worked manual labor working my way up then became made connections and all of a sudden i'm i'm mingling and all of a sudden by 27 i'm i've been hired to be the head over this or the head over that because i know english and by that time period i've been fluent in spanish too oh man dude that was a good question Say you also can enter Singapore with a criminal record. All right. Thanks for letting me know, brother. I appreciate that. That's a good statement. Glad you kind of like springboard off of the topic that we're talking about today. <coughs> oh, I don't know where this cough coming from. I do not know. Okay, Felicia. No, get it ASAP. Go for I don't know what Felicia's stalling for. Felicia, do not you. I'm gonna tell you something, Felicia. You know what? You, you know what? I'm gonna tell you something. I, I haven't told you, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart. You and sisters like you are why I'm going to make sure I bring more women on the panels and on the channel to bring more sisters to where you can see that there are sisters that with no excuse 
got their passports and are living their best lives. I kid you not. I think about you. I think about uh, Gail and other sisters that are right on the edge, but you're not sure. And I'm like, if I bring in other sisters, maybe these sisters will be able to see, hey, go for it. I'm telling you, it's more black women using passports than black men. Don't get it twisted. Felicia, do not let these dudes fool you because you got all these black male YouTube channels. There's a lot of black female YouTube channels too. And there are a lot more women using passports than men. They've been using it a lot longer than men. So when we say, when Charles and I say get it now, don't be using, well, I got to move. Then what next? I got to unpack. Then what next? It's going to always, life is going to always have something to interrupt what God is trying to do in your life. It'll always be something, something, something. Like Dr. Cornell West said, we all die in the middle of doing something. Nobody just sit around and say, you know what? I feel like dying today. We all usually are in the middle of doing something when our bodies start to break down. So, Felicia, you need to be in the middle of doing something other than moving. If you don't get that passport and, and go over to DR and get on somebody's beach and chill for about a good month or two, relax, find you a Tay Diggs, stop playing. Charles said, no grits talk, brother, no grit talk. That's right. We oatmeal over here. Uh, you were swollen. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm dipping. Talking about Terry Crews. Whoa. Let me see what guys are talking about. Okay, they're talking about somebody's channel. People are withdrawn from the support. Uh, brothers uh, on YouTube for much less, even less than. Okay, I'm dipping. Cats feels like. Uh, Okay, cats feel like some of uh, okay. Here we go. Bruce Bruce Wayne Rang said, uh, "Cats feel some type of way when you introduce Cali Curves to the world." <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did. Hey, I did the. <laughs> I <laughs> I sent the Cali Curves video out into the WhatsApp group, and Ace, you know, Ace was a part of it. Uh, we were part of Ace's WhatsApp group. In other words, man, Ace was down here like two weeks later. <laughs> I've been telling them dudes, man, y'all need to come down to Cali, man. Cali curves. And they didn't, they didn't know. They didn't believe me because nobody and nobody was here. Uh the only one was here that was that actually was here was like the main. The main uh let's learn Spanish. The main was the first one, the first brother, brother. That was other brothers that was here off and on. But the first one that was like via YouTube and connections and interviews, the main from Let's Learn Spanish. That brother was the first one here. I saw his interview on Ace Live. There was no other brothers coming down here. And so I was like number two, right? Because <laughs> I saw his interview. I said, I'm going to go to Kelly. And so uh, and then I saw the women. I was like, man, look at these. I never seen nothing like this outside of Africa or Brazil. And so I came out with the term called Cali Curves. And so Ace and them finally made it down. And uh, who's going to check you? Y'all know, right? Yeah. I still, it's kind of funny. I still got the video. You know what? I think, oh, do I still have it in my archives? It's so far back in my phone, man. It's so far back. Let me see if I can find it real quick. The, the, that, that would be fun if you guys got a chance to see the original Cali Curves video. Let me see if I have it in my archives. Because this was 2000. This had to be 2019. So let me go down to 2019. Okay, so I, I got to wait for everything to pop up. Boy, Andrea does not look the same. Oh, she looked different. I ain't mad at her. Go ahead, girl. Okay, 2019. Stop it, Andre. That's 2000. That's 2018. Let me go to. Okay, let me. Okay, I'm gonna talk to you guys while I'm scrolling through these videos. But we made the original Cali Curves video, and that's when uh 
dudes real start to realize like, well, maybe we should go down to check Cali out. Maybe we should inspect this area of Colombia. And so that's when a few guys start coming down. That's when Ace came down, and that's when um, Check and Effect came down of like a like a year and a half later. Barber War came down like a year year and a half later. Um, and a few other few other uh, content creators came down a few you know a few years later. But uh, for the most part, it was just your boy. And, and so far, it's, it's a it's a bunch of us down here. Wow, man. I'm looking at photos from 2019 when we first started purchasing furniture. <laughs> purchasing furniture and everything. Man. Wow. This is throwback. Oh, my first photo with Andrea's family. Crazy. That's way back when. Wow, man. You guys got me looking at the back down memory lane. Oh, I got a good photo for y'all. I got a good one. Check your girl out. She going to kill me with, hey, check it out. Back in the day, your girl. Let's see. Yep. That's your girl back in the day, Andrea, with the with the blondie blonde. Yeah, man. <laughs> back in the day. So let me see if I can find that video. Let me see if I can still find that video. So I'm still hunting for it. See if I can find it for us. Wow. Let me see if y'all can still see if y'all can still see that. Andrea's still rocking the blonde here. Okay, a little something shouting. Yeah, so while I'm pulling this up, so that's how dudes start coming to to uh to Cali because basically we we created this video, Cali Curves, and I'm trying to find it right now. Because it was in our archives. I, cre I actually created it. It was the first video that I ever edited. I actually found a, a phone editing app. And so I edited it on my phone. And <laughs> some old Ace pictures. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Boy, 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 boy. Oh, let, me, let me go back. That's your boy Ace Live back in the day. Back in 2019, back in the day. Wow, man. Time flies. Time just flies by. And that's, that's the part. And that's why you should get your passport, Felicia, because time flies. Oh, I got, I got one for you. I got an old Ace a 2018 one. I'm about to bust your head with. 2018 when Ace had the high top fade. I remember we took that photo. I mean, she was cute. The girl that, that uh, she was uh, working at Exodo. She has a sister. Nope, Andre doesn't have a sister. Her best friend, uh, she's in a relationship. Andre just has a, a younger brother. My boy Camilo. Uh, love Dre and I. Uh, uh, LOL Dre and I would have <laughs> We'd been fighting back then for Andre. <laughs> We'd been fighting back then. I ain't mad at you, player. <laughs> yeah, Ace back in the day, man. That was 2018, like May, April. Wow. Wow. Time flies by, man. We all older dudes. Of course, Ace is not that size anymore. <laughs> Let's see. Let me keep scrolling. Let me keep scrolling. Okay, we got that, that. I 
I'm trying to find it, guys. I, I don't seem to be able to find it. Okay, let me just break this down to just say Cali. Maybe maybe it'll just show me Cali videos. Uh, explore. Let me see if I could do that. It is going to be wow, man. Let me go all the way to the bottom and work my way up. We got fashion show video <laughs> videos. I hope you guys like that video that I, like I said, just dropped of the Petronio Alvarez Festival because like I mentioned before, it's going to be on the, from the 5th to the 19th here in Cali, Colombia. So for those of you that, I mean, not 19th, but 5th to the 10th. So for those of you that are going to be here in Cali, man, you're going to have the time of your life. Time of your life. You're going to have a good time. Okay, let me see if I can find this. I'm seeing videos, videos, videos. Man, we got, oh my goodness. I didn't realize how many videos we need to give you guys. So so many videos. That, oh my goodness. There are so many videos that we have yet to drop. Andre, shame. Shame. Oh, when I got my driver's license, I'm, I'm going through that. But I want to take, we're going to find this Cali Curves video now. We're on a quest. We're on a quest now to find this Cali Curves video before we get done for the evening. Once again, thank you guys for the super chats. Wow. Miss Diva. Can't tell your girl Andrea nothing, boy. She been in the gym. <laughs> we were doing a photo shoot at that time period. Don't do Tinder. Yeah, Ace was little back then, man. Ace was small back then. Yeah, Ace and I did that. That was like right when me and Ace did. He threw me on camera for the Mother's <laughs> for the Mother's Day video in two thousand two like two thousand eighteen. Yeah, two thousand eighteen. He threw me on camera for the Mother's Day video, and after that, that's when I've been doing YouTube. That's how long we've been doing YouTube. Um, of of course, you know I hadn't met Andrea yet and things like that, but I think he, he threw me in a, like a few of his videos. Look, man, we got so much footage we have not given you guys yet. Woo! Shame. I'm looking at us with the truck. Like, what in the world? Oh, little mama. Let's see. Let's see if I can find the Cali Curves. I'm all the way down to like 2018. It shouldn't be that far down. Oh, that was a good one when we went out dancing. We went to the car show. They do have car shows down here. They do have classic car shows in Colombia. Just in case you guys are wondering. Oh, I want you guys to see this photo real quick. This right here is when you are looking for an apartment in Colombia. 
you're gonna a lot of you guys have been to Colombia and you notice these signs out front. That's because the apartment that, that that sign is in front of is available. You know, like in the States, everything is on the internet. Well, everything is not on the internet in Colombia. So you do have the internet where you can look for apartments. Don't get me wrong. But you also have people that just put a sign out there with the phone numbers. You call the phone number and you set up an appointment to see the apartment. That's exactly how it works here. Like we got this apartment online. But. uh. You can just find apartments uh, offline as well. And that's how you usually do. You just, when you're walking by, what's that, Bruce? Man, I know I'm going way back in the day. Oh, that's going to be a good video, the Portugal Curves, part two. Yeah, man. I may just stay in Cali <laughs> I, I know dudes that have said that, like, man, you know what? I might just go ahead and hit Cali and, and sit my butt, my butt down. I know dudes that have not that live in Cali and have never been to Medellin. They're like, man, why should I go? I'm happy. I got a partner down here, man. He be he have a good time down here in Cali. And he has never been to Medellin. He's been down here to Cali seven times. Kid you not, seven times in Cali and has never been to Medellin. He's been everywhere else. He's like, oh, I'll get to it when I get to it. <laughs> oh, dude, I got some photos that I no, no. Those photos I showed you, Andrea, she'll be cool with. I got some photos of Andrea that she'd be like, really? That's what we're doing? <laughs> so, yeah, those are cool photos. Let's see if I can still find this Kelly Kerr's video. Wow. Okay, here we go. Let's see. We got concerts. Oh, we got me and grandma. Okay. See, what I'm telling myself is I went back. Yep, I went back too far. I'm all the way down to when Andrea was showing me around Cali. Wow. See how young your girl look? Andrea looked like a shorty back then. Man, Andrea, met, she was 23. 23 years old. Fresh and spry. That was the first weekend that we spent together. You see we're in front of the Cali sign. For those of you that been that been with us in front of the Cali sign recently, it doesn't even look like that anymore. It's got musical notes all over it. That's when it was all white. Okay. Uh, uh, my, my man said, let me see what the date is. It is. Oh, that's 50. Oh, wait a minute. Let me see it. That's 10, 10. That's a 50. 78 77 am i getting it right am i getting that's that should be 77 i'm talking about your roman noodle numerals 77 uh let me know if i did it correctly if i got it correctly andre did your wife know english yes she did when we met i didn't i didn't know that or did she learn english uh vice versa no <coughs> andre actually knew english Hey, check it out. I'm in the mall that, that's down the street from us. That's the ironic part, right? Thank you for the super chat, brother. Uh, I'm in the mall down the street. I know you guys have heard this story before. I'm in the mall down the street, and I see this female, and I, I, I'm i like, I'm about to pull out my Google Translate. I pull my phone out because, hey, I'm I'm in Medellin. I pull the women with the Google Translate, so I'm in Cali. 
I'm thinking about the pool of women with the Google Translate. Man, she turned around, started speaking English. I just took my little, <laughs> I, I, just, I just took my little phone away, and uh, that was it. That was it. So yeah, and so I, I, my my line was, check it out. My line was, uh. Do you know of any museums around here or any place, any tour places? You know, I'm not from here, blah, blah, blah. You know, I had to throw the charm. She was like, oh, yes. She said there's some places over by blah, blah, blah. And she named some places. And she just was kind of like distant. Like, uh, and? So you're American, and? And I'm like, no, I'm not just American. I'm me. I'm Andre, girl. You know, that's me thinking like that. But, uh. So I was like, well, okay, how about, what's your name, blah, 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 so forth and so forth. We exchanged information. I said, maybe you can show me around. I'm going to be here a few days. And she said, you know, I got some days off. I'll be able to show you, show you around. She hadn't been back in Cali for a year because Andre used to live in Medellin. And so she hadn't been back in, because family members got ill. That's when Andre came back to take care of family. You know how Colombians are about family. And so uh, that's why she came back. So she had been back like, like, about eight months to a year. And um, so she showed me around Cologne, Cali. She took me straight to the museums, blah, 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 blah. And we just hung out that, that, that video that you just, I mean, a picture of us it, that was uh, at the, at the, uh, at the Cali sign. We had just left restaurant eating and that was across the street from the museum on the West side of town uh, where there's nothing else but that park. And so we hung out there in the museum. A lot of people hang out there, but it was cool. Uh, it's festival and show season getting uh, get out there. Yes, it is. It really is. He said, can you get a good apartment for, oh, we pay $3.30. <laughs> we pay $3.30 a month. And our, our regular rent is, we pay $3.30 because of the cost of the dollar is going up. But our regular rent is like three eighty a month, and we get we got two bedrooms, two bedroom, two bathrooms. You guys have heard me say it: the vaulted ceilings that's ten foot. We got the island stove. We've got the um, brand new washer and dryer units. The building is maybe like five, it's like seven years old right about now. Uh, we've been here four years, no, three years. We've been here three years. Wait a minute. Well, well, January would be our fourth year. Uh, and what else? Security, our garage downstairs, all utilities, cable and Wi-Fi. Two bedroom, two bath, as I just mentioned. We got a terrace upstairs. It's great. Million dollar view. You can't pay for it. Okay. If any of you guys remember the video where Ace and I did the, uh, the, Tinder, the Tinder video in Cali. That's probably one of Ace's number one videos, the Tinder video, when we just was scrolling through Tinder uh, in Cali. That was upstairs of here. We were upstairs in the terrace, and so we had the mountains behind us, the mountain view, and we. so you got, if you guys get a chance to ever see that again, that is our apartment upstairs terrace. We got, a, we got exercise equipment upstairs. This is, this is zone five which is the second highest zone, which is like upper middle class uh, location. Like if you ain't got no money, you ain't got no business living over here. And that's where we live right now. Uh, but for four, and we do all that for 380 a month. All of our bills, every one of our bills, including salary, including food, including everything, we pay with two people $1,200 to $1,500 a month with two people and that's with us going out eating wherever we want we just went out has some, we, like we went out to one of our favorite sushi spots yesterday i think it was yesterday or the day before yesterday favorite sushi spots we got medical insurance we got our vehicle insurance all all these things all these things we have fifteen hundred dollars a month can't beat it and the dollar is getting stronger <laughs> Oh, yeah. Okay, I don't, I'm dipping now. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, Bruce said, I just remembered Ace screaming and Dre, <laughs> Dre looked like he was going to take a fruit cup uh, from you uh, on that Cali Curse video. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yep. Because I was like, man, y'all need to come out here, man. Cali Curves out here. And them dudes would not believe me for nothing, man. They would not believe me for nothing. And so I said, let me create a video for these guys. Okay, let me scroll back up to 2000. Two thousand nineteen. Let's see if, if I have it there. Okay, that's the okay, that's New Year's Eve of two thousand eighteen going to nineteen. So let's see. Okay, let me show you guys how different. Now, when we first, wow, no, let me show you a different photo. Let's see. Okay, now I'll show you this photo when we first, now you saw how the white the Cali sign was. Now you see the Cali sign has all those musical notes on there now. So that's how it looks now. It has a bunch of music notes all around it. You see me standing on the L. He said, I'm working on getting, he said, I'm working on getting my, uh, getting my friend to come uh, on your show. Cool. Anytime. Uh, she's a female traveler. I would love anytime you got a female traveler that you guys suggest, please let me know. Reach out to me, email me, whatever you have to do. Let me put Felicia. Could you do me a favor? I think I, I think I, I think Andre has it already up here. Uh, she's cool to engage person. Yes, I am. That's one thing I am very adamant about. That's our email address. Make sure that you email me once you. Excuse me. Once you talk to her and uh, let her know, let her know about our channel. We are very, very interested in female travelers. I don't care about race, color, creed, none of that. As long as that person is a, a person that takes advantage of their passport, I want to interview them because I want to encourage other women to. I'm going to tell you something for real. I try to encourage women not to put up with the bull in the States. <laughs> I try to encourage women to be like, girl, you ain't got to put up with him no more. <laughs> you, you ain't got to deal with that. How how dare he? You got a passport. I want, I want to see more women with passport arrogance like us brothers got passport arrogance. Believe you me. Yeah, you ain't got to put up with that tomfoolery. So, yeah, definitely, definitely. That's my email, A Spence 2011. Uh, and man, set it up, man, because I would love to interview, uh, interview your friend. Seriously. I see shy Japanese women use translator to open up convo with me. Yeah, man, listen. That's my, uh, by the way, that's my, if I wasn't married to, a Colombian, my wife would be Japanese, head, hands down. I have a Japanese woman. I love them. I think they're so, so beautiful. Now, not the ones that are super pale, but boy, whew, I love Japanese women. I won't even lie. I'm kind of like a bias, like uh, International Passport. You know, if you watch International Passport channel, you already know he loved any woman of Asian descent. Brothers. Brothers, brothers, let's talk about the Asian women. Let's talk about the Asian women. Brothers, brothers, they're amazing, aren't they? They're amazing. Brother, 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 tell me, how, how'd you meet her? Tell me how'd you meet her? I am, brother, bro, bro, brothers, you should donate right now. 
This brother is giving you the truth of Asian women. Brother, tell us more. Brother. That's my that's my imitation of international passport. I'll be rolling them. He he don't say brothers. He say with a V, brothers. Brothers. <laughs> brothers. Brothers, tell us more about the about the Asian women. Brothers. <laughs> yeah, that's him. That's him. He do, he does not no T H at all. Brothers with a V. Brothers. He love Asian women, man. But I know me. Japanese, hands down, my top five beautiful women of all time. Easy. Easy I would have had a Japanese wife. I would have been in Japan all day long. Andrea stopped me from going to Japan. So because Andrea got that little Asian look about her, and she got that full face like Japanese slash Philippines, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. All right now, South Korea on the map. Okay, let me see. I'm going to give one more chance to see if I can find this Cali Curry's video. <coughs> Excuse me, guys, because if I don't find it now, oh, our first little trip to Armenia to the coffee region. Our first trip to the coffee region. That's when your boy still had a gap in his teeth. See, I ain't shy about showing mine. Our first trip to the coffee regions. Wow. That was 2000, like 2018, 2019. Wow. Back in the day. I don't even still have, oh, wait a minute. Do I still have that Laker hat? I know I don't still have my Black Panther shirt, so. Andre, the Black Panther shirt. Okay, let's see. Okay, we got the family photos, blah, blah, blah. I'm trying to scroll up. Wait a minute. I'm getting close to where we made the Got it. Got it. Got it. Get the heck out of here. Got it. Let me see if it's going to work for us. The Cali Curves video. Classic. I'm going into the archives. Let me get this thing working for us. Because it's processing slowly. Wow. The Cali Curves video. Okay, it can start working now. You can start working. You can start processing for us now. Yeah, there we go. Let's see. Okay, I'm going to give it a minute to process. While I hang out with you guys. Wow. The Cali. I know, right? Brothers, here we go. <laughs> IP be having me rolling, man. That's my. <laughs> but but his, his British accent, man. I'll be like, man, listen. I'll be like, IP so smooth with it, man. So soft spoken. I'd be like, do he speak like this like in real life? Mother. Mother, really, mother, listen, I'm only, I only want, I only want cheese grits, mother. I saw Zoom to Thailand. He had cheese grits, mother. Oh, come on, video. Okay, let me see. Let me see. There's, there's more than one way to skin a cat. Let's see if I download it and see if it'll work. Okay, it's downloading, let it process. Da, 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 da. Yep, that's it, baby. That is it. Cali Curse in the building. Wow, I haven't seen this in forever. Give me a second. Give me a second to pull this up for us. 
Okay, let me put this to the side. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. Oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> he said, we told him about Japanese Brazilian. Yeah, that, that's true. I remember that. I saw that episode. <laughs> he bought blue a casket. I, I saw that episode. <laughs> I saw that one. Yep. Uh, he's splitting hairs, half sweet and half Asian. Yep, that's boy. He is funny. Let's get to the video. Let's get to the Cali Curse video. This is the original video that I created. It was like a four, five, six minute video, trying to get guys to come to Cali, Colombia. That's our original purpose of me and Andrea. Let me take this banner down. Original purpose that Andrea made. Uh, to get guys to come visit Cali. I didn't say I was the best editor. Wow, my audio was it was horrible. That hard breathing you hearing, that's me after climbing up the mountain. Man, I do not know what's in the water. I think that was it. Was that it? That might, yep, that might have been it. Yep, that was it. Boy, my editing skills and <laughs> music selection <laughs> horrible. That was my first video. Horrible. I say horrible. Oh, wait a minute. Is it back on? Hold on, Mr. Spacey. Oh, bad, bad editing. <laughs> I still had. Oh, I was not a good editor back then. I still had music playing and everything. That was bad. But that was my first edited video trying to get guys to come down to to Cali, Colombia. Uh, if that was me recording, I would have. Uh, 
I would have fainted <laughs> from excitement <laughs> as they squatted up. The, the girls got squatted up the stairs. Hey, I had Andre there, so I had to be cool and professional. But uh, don't get me wrong. I was like, damn. As a dude, I was like, damn. Girl, for real? You going to do that in front of me? <sighs> uh, uh, you were, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I was big. Uh, they were front, yeah. Let's see. Oh, yeah, they see me. They see me with the camera posing. I know, right? I had to pee. <laughs> that's, that's, that's exactly what it was. The PBS music going. Oh, I didn't even think about that. That was a good one. I didn't even think about that. You were absolutely correct. I had the PBS music going. You finally made it Los. <laughs> Did you get a chance to see when I just threw the original Kelly Kerr's video up there? Rainy Rainbow. Yup. <laughs> Track. Yup. <laughs> oh, man. Just got from. Oh, what you go see? Let me know what you go see. All right, shout outs to Los. That's the same music they use. <laughs> the work the workplace instructional videos. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, y'all stupid, man. Y'all coming with the good ones. Those are some good jokes, man. Facts. Facts. Oh man, oh man, that's funny. Oh. Okay, I'm dipping in the conversation. That's funny. Okay, I guess that you should should come a long way. See? Y'all see? Hey, that goes to show you when you first start YouTubing or doing any type of editing or type of video. I always tell YouTubers this during a consultation. Your first, I promise you, your first 25 videos are going to be garbage compared to your next 25 videos. Like Don Omar, his verse, his first videos decent. His first, his next 25, you'll see the difference. You'll see the difference. It's, it's just all YouTubers. No, there's no YouTuber that started off with just I started off with the best quality. But, yeah, nobody did that. Nobody that started for YouTube came out the gate with the best quality of 100% of everything, even if you had the best camera. So, yeah, uh, that's good. That's good to see that everyone must start somewhere. <laughs> yes. Also, you were too close up in that crack. I was, wasn't I? I didn't realize. Dude, I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know. Oh, minions. Minions was funny, man. I like Minions. I saw that the other day. Yeah, it was good. It was good. You know, all the Minion movies are good, though. Especially since he was young, showed him as a kid. Uh, women staying in shape and humble as, yes, as, yeah. That's the part about Cali that I can't say. They stay in shape, man, and they... I'm going to tell you something like I always say about South America. Even Los can attest to this. One thing that women in South America know more than anything else. Andre know this. All the other women in South America know this. The I keep trying to tell y'all, the competition is deep. It's not like the states. States, you can have one beautiful woman and all the other chicks are like either partly obese or full obese or just straight Lizzo, but then you got maybe one or two that's fine. She knows she ain't got no competition like that. So that's why she walking around like, I miss Diva, I miss it, queen of the world. That don't work in South America. <laughs> you ain't the only fine one, Miss Kardashian, Miss whoever you think you are. Somebody said I saw I saw a, 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 a YouTube video. The most beautiful women of all time. The most beautiful women in the world. 
and they put like all type of actresses and so forth, and they was like Beyonce, and I was like, what? Beyonce, cool. But I know women, if Beyonce wasn't famous, I know women in the hood that'll blow Beyonce 1967 uh, teeth having butt out. I know plenty of women that look better than Beyonce. One was standing next to her, Kelly. Eh, please, I wasn't a Beyonce. I don't know about you guys. How many of you guys, let's be for real. How many of you brothers were Beyonce fans? I wasn't. Destiny Child, I'm like, who is that chocolate chick with the short haircut. I would even hear him. None Beyonce was saying. I was like, I'm waiting for the, the background to sing. Can you pay my bills? Can you pay my telephone bills? Can you buy an automobile? I'm like, who is that singing that part? Whatever Beyonce singing, I don't give a dang about what she's singing. But who is that chocolate sister that's singing? That's all I cared about. Beyonce, one of the most beautiful women in the world. Come on, man. Y'all ain't gonna market it like that, man. Don't do that. But here in Colombia, women know the competition is deep. They know there's other women that are that are that are doing. Yeah, they know that they. I know it's late tonight. They know that there are other women out there that have looks, the hair, the style, the the uh, they are cooperative. You got a female in Colombia that ain't cooperative. Don't worry. She going to get cooperative. Why? Because she know it's 50 other women that look better than her and they cooperative. And she know it. So at the end of the day, yeah. They know one thing. They know to keep their bodies together. They know the competition is deep, deep here in Colombia. Uh, good to see you didn't give up on your dream. No, no, Greg. No, no. Uh, Kevin Samuel's first YouTube uh, videos were rough. To yeah, dude. Let me pull up KS's first video. Let me see if I can pull up KS's first. Dude, KS's first video was trash. One, two, three. Four, five, hi. I'm Kevin Sam. You like what? The, the, no, no, no. You are not Kevin Samuels. Kevin Samuels is like Kevin Samuels. You looking at this dude like who the hell is this dude talking about? I am Kevin. That you can't be Kevin Samuels. Let me see if I can. Man, what till y'all see Kevin's first video? Man, y'all gonna be looking like. <coughs> I can't believe this. This cannot be Kevin Samuels. Okay, I'm on his channel. I mean, Kevin got so smooth and everything, but if you go back to see his videos, you like, what the? Yeah, his playlist is so long, man. It'll take a minute just to go all the way back to the beginning. Beginning. Okay, I'm, I'm think I'm doing good because um, anytime you see Kevin Samuel videos and it's only it's only three hundred thousand views, that means that means that you're making your way back. Man, I didn't realize how many video videos this dude put out just on the ladies. I ain't mad at Kev. Goodness gracious, it's going to take a hot minute for these videos to go back. He got videos going all the way back to when I first started watching them. Kev, 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 man, we miss you, brother. Mr. Style. He had one video on here called Are You Gay? Because women was trying to say, oh, he gay, but blah, 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 blah. They don't like that boy. Boy, some of them sisters, not all sisters, but some of those sisters in the States did not like the fact that this brother was a straight brother telling them straight truth. 
And it's sad to sit back and see all these sisters now are trying to imitate him. Like the Tasha K's and not Tasha K, but the uh the other sisters that are trying to imitate him on Facebook and on Instagram. They try to follow his pattern. Well, I can give advice now. No, it, no, you can't, Ben. Ben, no, you can't. Oh wow, we're going okay. I'm back to four years ago when I first started looking at him. And he's doing his cologne. Oh, okay. He got the time forward up there. Okay, all right, brother. Six years ago. Oh, yeah, here we go. Here we go. I was like, oh, like, bro, if you don't set your happy tail down with this intro. Okay, I'm going to take y'all. <laughs> Yo, y'all going to love this one. This is the first Kevin Samuels original video. I'm about to I'm about to let you guys check this out. Y'all going to have fun with this one. Like, really? And he it, it, he reminds you nothing of who he, who he became. And that's what I want you guys to realize when it comes to our first video. Please. Yeah, yeah, man. We stay in the gym, man. And it's nothing. The gym stay packed. Man, the gym stay, stay so packed in Colombia. He said, I just need one. <laughs> he said, I just need one Afro Colombian. I'm good. Well, there's a bunch of ladies down here for you. Yeah, I always, I've always said Beyonce was overrated. Her voice, everything. I think she's, I, no, don't get me wrong. <clears throat> I've seen her in a concert. Easy. And your top performers do not get me wrong beyonce is a great performer and entertainer but as far as like if you put like that's why beyonce got got offended when they put jennifer hudson in the once in dream girls and jennifer hudson blew up and nobody thought about beyonce in dream girls beyonce became like number two jennifer hudson became all the dream girls and Beyonce couldn't handle that. Oh, I can't believe I should be the top one. No, 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 Beyonce. You can't sing like that. Better looking women uh, than them in Colombia and Brazil. Yeah, that's true. Okay, let's get ready to uh, watch this KS video. Then I'm going to come back to the comments. And this is just to let you guys know, listen, we all start from somewhere. Let's share the video. Oh, this is gonna be funny. Let me take this off the out the way. There we go. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Welcome to uh, Life in Style by Kevin Samuels. I'm Kevin Samuels, your lifestyle coach. Today we have another fragrance of you, and it's another fragrance that I consider to be a designer masterpiece. It comes to us from the house of Tom Ford, of course, and it's called Black Orchid. Now, let me ask you all a question. How would you describe the smell of seduction? How would you describe the smell of sultry? It's kind of difficult, right? And I don't want to use the term sex because sex is an oversimplification. Sex is too easy. That's carnal. That's just physical. This is everything leading up to that. So let's start out with what this fragrance is. <laughs> it is classified as a This is us. I'll be honest with you. It tends to lean more feminine. <laughs> I'll say about 55%. Oh my God, y'all some monsters. 
but it was marketed originally to men. Now, there's an Eau de Parfum version, and in 2015, he made an Eau de Toilette version. I won't bother you with the top notes and the bottom notes, but I will get to the top notes and the middle notes, but I will tell you the bottom notes are. They're vetiver, sandalwood, patchouli, amber, vanilla, and incense. So what that's really going to give you is more of a warm, sweet, earthy, balsamic, spicy, cocoa kind of accord. What does all that mean? It just basically means this is the scent of seduction. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, this is directly <gasps> You can spray this on in the right part, on the right place of your body, behind your ears, best your neck, on your pulse points, on your wrist, one or two sprays behind your knee, and then whoosh, let it cascade down through your hair. And I guarantee when you walk into a room, people will notice. You own that place. There is absolutely no way a woman can walk by a man wearing black orchid and not be noticed. It's That's true. That unique. It is that powerful. I think this per personally, I think this fragrance should be in the Hall of Fame of designer fragrances. It is one of the best fragrances I've ever smelled. When I just want to pick me up, I just put it on. Now, here's a caveat for guys: it's unisex. We can wear it too, and I do. But you better be heck of you got to be very, very secure in your manhood to pull off a fragrance that's this complex. Not because it smells like a woman because it's a complex fragrance. It smells good on everyone. I wore this fragrance and had people stop me just to sniff me. Tom Ford Black Orchid. The closest thing that I can ever think of in the designer world to putting seduction and sultry in one bottle. There's an Eau de Parfum version and there's an Eau de Toilette version. Do yourself a favor. Really run out and try this. Ladies especially. If you're looking for that one signature fragrance that we're on that special evening when you're really trying to make that impression on that guy, this is it. Guys, same thing. If you're confident in yourself and you can pull this off, I guarantee you she won't be mad. She'll be happy you did it. But it is one of those fragrances is a better reserve for the cooler months. And I would recommend this as a nighttime evening fragrance. So let's say you're going on a romantic date, you're going out to dinner, you're going to a special event. You know, I wouldn't wear this in the office um, as a daily fragrance. Although it can be a signature scent, it will be a signature evening scent because it is such a powerhouse that no one's going to get any work done around you because you smell that good and that's just not fair to the company <laughs> time for black orchid um which brings me to another point i didn't wear this fragrance for quite a while because it reminded someone of someone from their past. But more about that on another video. So we're going to have a two for one today. So time for a black orchid. Go out, try it, buy it, love it. Simple as that. Dark chocolate in a bottle. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -hmm. this. Until next time, mm -hmm. talk to you later. That was it. That's that's your boy KS. That's that's the KS that we've all grown to know and love. That's KS original video, the first one. He said, so let's see what the brother said. He said, Dre, uh, for being down there uh, a couple of years 
uh, do you think uh, Colombianas are more American? No, no, they don't want to be Americanized. Uh, and I, I'll tell you what I mean by that. Give me, a, give me a moment to finish off your statement. I'm seeing the tattoos pop up, and they are from pop up down down there from watching videos of content creators. Now, I'm glad that you said that, Kenny. Good point. Shout out to you. Okay. To a certain extent, America brands itself to impact other countries. We impact everybody. Let's be real. We impact music, dance, art, creativity. We impact everybody as Americans. The question is, how do we want to impact them? And do we want to do we want to deal with the women that have been impacted? There are a lot of women in South America that are so strong to hold their own culture that they could give less than a dang of putting a weave in their head or or changing their hair color or they want to do it because they have their own culture, their own image, their own history of of what it's like to be a Colombian, whether it be Afro-Colombian, because they're, many of them are from uh, the Congo area and they still have their culture or it's individuals such as Andrea that don't want to be Americanized. They really don't. So I have to I have to agree with you to a certain extent that there are certain regions. That's why I said that certain regions of Colombia that are becoming Americanized, such as uh, Medellin. Uh, that's why the Medellin that I knew is gone. It's a completely different Medellin now. Shout out to Medellin. Uh, but at the end of the day, it is what it is. There are still some good women down here, whether they got the tats or not. <laughs> whether they got the tats or not, you got some. But yeah, America does have its influence, especially by way of YouTube. So. Uh, grabbing uh, my bucket hat, uh, Amazon right now. Grabbing my bucket. Okay, I'm I'm dipping. Bruh had a. He said, "Bruh, hand was big as his butt." <laughs> yeah, and plus Kevin had like like three ring. He had the thumb ring. He had the the middle ring, and then he had the pinky ring. I'm like, Kevin, you're doing too much, bruh. But and then he started off counting. Remember that? One, two, three, four, five. Six. Like, Kevin, what the hell are you doing? And if you're gonna do that, why didn't you edit that part out? But I love that he left that in because it's just to let us know. I'm telling you, all YouTubers evolve. All of us evolve. Man, listen, all of us evolve. He was a gem, though. Yes, he was. 6'4", four. Six, four, six, six, yes. Yeah, they did do they did do them right in BET Awards when they talked about uh <coughs> excuse me, when they talked about those that have passed on that we're gonna miss, and they showed Kevin, and people loved it. People loved when Kevin when they showed Kevin Samuels. The brother had an impact on the world, whether we want to admit it or not. There are people around the world that respected Kevin, whether black people wanted to embrace. That's the funny. That's probably the saddest part of Kevin Samuels passing is how many people that were non-black missed him and embraced him from around the world and black women. In the states, and not all black women, but y'all taught me something. I man, listen, y'all know I'm really speechless. <laughs> Definitely not the Ace Club. Yeah, y'all know I'm really speechless. But how black women? treated that man after he died i am appreciative 
Here's to all the black women that talked about Kevin, embarrassed themselves, talked about his mama, his family, his girlfriend. See, a lot of dudes were wondering, and it all came together. You were wondering why he was saying the competition is not Becky. It's Maria. It's Mani Salas. I mean, not Mani Salas, but Magali. She is your competition, the Latin sister. People were wondering why Kevin was learning Spanish, why Kevin was talking about, I'm taking dance, I'm taking salsa lessons. He talked about that several times. A lot of people didn't catch on. So for him to be with the, have a Latin girlfriend, now you are, now for those of us that travel, we I get it now. That's why he's studying Spanish. That's why he's taking Latin classes. That's why he's talking about your competition is not the white girl, it's the Latin girl. I got it now. But he kept his business to himself. That's why we didn't understand. But once he passed on, we're like, I got it. And then here you come with the black sisters with the rhino horns. Black women would have knocked, if they would have just had a public viewing, black women would have knocked over that man's casket. Thank you, black women, for letting me see I made the right decision. For letting me see how evil you can be even to a person that's dead. And I'm not talking, because now mind you, I'm not talking about all sisters because there are millions of really great, and I didn't say good, I said great black women in the United States, some great women. But it was enough evil ones to let me Los and Ace, every other brother that have left and ain't been back since, you let us know one thing. We made the right decision. When I was at that crossroads and I could have went this way, but I, I could have went this way, but I went this way. Thank you, black women. Thank you. that. Thank you, black simps. Oh, don't sit back and think that it was just the sisters that was that tried to crucify that man. I want to say thank you to all the black simps that I thought that could have been my boy, that I could have eventually met you and I would have thought that you was a cool dude, but you wasn't nothing but an effing simp. Thank you for letting me know that I made the right decision by getting a passport and getting the hell away from you simple-minded brothers. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Only accept uh, old gold. I understand, uh, y'all. Y'all, y'all made, y'all made a bad decision. Okay, I'm, I'm dipping. See, see how nosy I am. Bruce says, "So where should a man seek a wife? <coughs> it depends on what type of wife you're looking for." I give a perfect example. What I mean by that, uh, Bruce and other guys, uh, tw Twan, hey Twan, I need, I've been waiting for you, uh, Bruce. I'm gonna come back to your statement. Hey Twan, check it out, man. I've been looking in the emails. Me and Andre been looking in the emails. All of, I have not found your email. Is it under a different name other than your other than your name, your first name and last name? Let me know because I kid you not. E even I put in Antoine. And I could not find anything under your name. So if it's under something different, let me know. And I'll definitely uh, get to your email ASAP. We went back through our archives and we could not find your email. And we went, we got three uh, uh, emails. We got three, we got, we got mostly money channel. And then we got Andre and Andre info. And then we got the simple one, which is Andre I mean, which is which is a Spence 2011 that we always show. We went through all three of them. We could not find your email, brother. So send your email again. You know, I, and it's our bad, our bad if we can't find it. But send it to a Spence 2011. 
because I just I, I definitely want to make sure I get the the information out to you. A Spence 2011. Any of you guys that's emailing me uh, in regards to consultations or any basic information, email me at A Spence 2011 and I'll make sure that I respond. We are very meticulous when it comes to the emails. Uh, and even when somebody reaches out to us for sponsorship, we are very, very, that's one thing, comment section in the emails are the lifeblood of our channel. And so we try to make sure that we respond to both. Okay. Let me get back. Let me see if I can get back to where I was before. Before I may have, I may have pushed pushed myself out. My bad. Now I forget who I who I was. Uh, let me look for oh, Antoine. Okay, that was Antoine right there. I think. Uh, it was Bruce Rains asked me a question about the best, the best countries that you can find your uh, find a woman. And I would have to say is the country or the locations where you would go, not where anybody else would go. Because and I and I say this for a reason. <clears throat> I guess we are going to finish off this Bible tonight. <laughs> yeah, it's official. Okay, the reason why I say that is some guys find the love of their life in Brazil. Some of them find the love of their life in Thailand. So you have to ask yourself, one thing I, 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 I mentioned to guys is this. Be honest with what you want. You got a passport now. You know, in the States, if you were born in a black community, nine times out of ten, you probably end up with somebody black. Right. It's really not by choice. It's by cultural and it's by geographical location. The sisters are here. I was raised around sisters. So be it. <clears throat> but now you got a passport. Now you have the opportunity to be anywhere. And if you were like, 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 like a IP. What, what about the Asian Asian women, brothers? Brothers, let's talk about the Asian women. If you are into the Asian women, go. If you are into Latin women, go. If you are into uh, indigenous women of any other culture, go. If you're into the tall, supermodel European women, go. There is the, the beauty of a passport is you are unlimited to whereas in the States, it was a limitation of what you could have, what you could do, where you could go. You unlimited, Bruce. You are unlimited. So that would be my response in regards to uh, to that. I know, Barry, rest in power, uh, Kevin. We miss you, brother. I guess I'm going to find out uh, Professor Don. Oh, yeah. Pro yeah. Yeah. Shout out to Don, Prof. Uh, Don Omar with the growing channel. Oh, yeah. You say I'm firmly <laughs> a firmly team snow bunny. Yeah. I think I'm going to say something here for the first time, too. I say a lot of times, a lot of things here for the first time. I love Afro-Colombian sisters. I think they're so beautiful, so, like, energetic, so much fun, laughter, smiles, everything. Just cool people, man. But I, even before I met Andrea, I was, man, I was burnt on just being with sisters. And I know his brothers just like, man, I only mess with sisters, the chocolate, my sisters, the queens, the, the, cool, I got you. I'm one with you. I'm with you. I just want a variety. I just want to, 
see what another culture had to offer me, another color, another. I just want to see what something else had to offer me because I told myself, why would I fly to another continent to be with the same thing I had on my original continent? Why don't I fly to North America to be with the same thing in South America? Oh, she speaks Spanish. Okay, her language is different, but does she have the same type of attitude as some of the North American women? So I had to ask myself that. Not saying that they do, but I just want to sit back and say, because your, your passport is your what if. What if I went to Japan and, and start dating Japanese women? What if I went to Brazil and start dating Asian women in Brazil? What if I didn't date sisters? What would happen in my life? What if I dated women as, that were in France or Portugal? What if I dated sisters that were in Argentina or dated sisters that were in Uruguay or Paraguay? You know, your passport gives you the opportunity to say, F it, what if? What if I didn't just date sisters that remind me of sisters in the States? They wear weaves in South America too. If you think that them sisters down here, you guys know, it's sisters down here wearing weaves because they see sisters in North America wearing weaves. It's sisters down here getting all tatted up because they see sisters in North America getting tatted up. They might not have the same moods and attitudes. But they do follow some of the same, you know, stylish patterns. So, yeah, I'm, I'm with you, brothers, that sit back and say, man, I'm going to give another culture a chance. I, like I always say, I gave sisters 50 years of my life. 50. 50. You couldn't get me to stop cheating on you in 50 years. You couldn't get me to stop lying to you and lying to myself in 50 years. You couldn't get me to stop disrespecting relationships in 50 years. Come on, sisters. You can get me to sit my butt down somewhere in 50 years. Be responsible like I was a family man in 50 years. Some of you guys need to ask that question. Are sisters, some of you guys are 30. Have sisters fulfilled the destiny of what you need to have fulfilled in your in 30 years? From birth to this 30th birthday, has she done her job for real? <clears throat> Some of you guys are 42, 43. Have sisters actually done the job that they were supposed to do in your life in 43 years? She had 43 years to get you right. And you still part fuck up. But you're still dealing with sisters. But you about to give another 43 years? I say that to the sisters. Sisters, you've been dealing with brothers for 38 years. He still ain't act right or you still ain't acting right. Sisters, you gonna give these brothers another 38 years? You gonna give them another 38 Well, if they couldn't get you right in 38 years to where you marry, settle down, focused on them, to where you, if, now, now mind you, all men go through temptations. I go through the temptations. Every man go through the temptations. I could go smash this and won't nobody know. Every man goes through that. That's just a lifelong journey for men. So don't sit back and think that Andre in love and he never gets tempted. You niggas crazy. Think about it. I live in Colombia 
in this Brazilians here in Venezuela. You, and just because I won't date an Afro Colombian, I could smash one or 10. Knowing me, 20. Every man goes through the temptation. But why is it that somebody that's non black was able to get me to sit down and realize that the temptation is there, but I don't have to walk into the temptation to where the sisters couldn't do that? Why is it there's a dude that's dating a Japanese woman right now and he, there is nothing about her that's going to cause any sister to, to make him throw that, that Japanese chick away? He good. She spoils him and treat him like a king. Her black king. Her black panther. And he looking at them sisters like, am I supposed to cheat with you and lose my woman who's spoiling me? No, that's all right. Some of you brothers are 61. Sisters ain't got you to sit your ass down somewhere in 61 years. You still got every, you got her, her, you with her, you with her, you with her. And your, and your heart on the inside says, I just want one good one. Just one good one. But you smashing her, her, ain't not one of them sisters got you to sit your happy ass down at all. But you steady talking about I'm down for the sisterhood. No, you down for smashing sisters, but you ain't sat down with no sisters for real, for real. I got divorced from a sister in the States. That don't count because it didn't last. So when I sit back and I say, maybe you should explore another culture. I'm not trying to lure you into you should be with this person. I'm just saying, let's look at it from the chronological point of view. If the if the group that you've been dealing with ain't one not one NFL game, one NBA game, one NHL game, no major league baseball game ever in 50 years. If you're a Detroit Lion fan and they ain't never won one game in 50 years, why are you a fan of that team? So it is. If these sisters ain't won in your life, in the game of life for you, why are you still chasing sisters? And I love my sisters. Like I said, as far as my sisters, as far as them being my sisters, I wouldn't choose anybody else. I love black women and what they bring to the table. Love them. Love them, love them, love them. Just I I could let's put it like this. If I was single, I could smash them, but I couldn't mess with them. No. No. Sisters bring so much to the table. And some of you brothers are like me. You love what the sisters bring to the table. It can help you out with and encourage you into doing. But as far as being serious with one, you you ask yourself, when was the last time you was really serious, 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 serious with a sister? Serious, serious. And if you were that serious, why didn't it work out? Because she ain't get you right. I mean, I know the responsibility is on you, but there's a certain percentage of this person in your life is supposed to be able to have something about them the way you say I, they're not worth losing. See, my wife, she ain't worth the loss. She's not worth the loss. I, 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 I ain't seen a sister. I ain't met a sister to where I was like, I'm going to smash this chick on the side because I, if I lose my wife, I, I, it's worth the loss. I ain't met one that's worth the loss. And you got to ask yourself, have you met a sister that's worth keeping? And if you if she is worth keeping, why haven't you kept her? Whether it be in the States or outside the States. So maybe you should. Some of you brothers. <laughs> some of you brothers. 
should be like IP and checking out Asian chicks. Like I already told y'all, if I wasn't with Andre, I know I'll be a Japanese with Japanese woman, hands down, no doubt. Oh yeah, without a doubt. I'll look at him and his Japanese wife. Yup. You think I don't get the look from sisters down here? Look at him with his beautiful, attractive white woman. Because in Colombia, Andre is considered a white woman. With his white woman. You tell him you can find one. Look at them drop, just stepping out of their brand new truck with his white woman. He's dressing all, all adult with his hats and his white woman. Look at how she dressed. Look at her hair. Look at her, her nails. That's expensive. Look at that white woman. You think I don't get those looks down here? Please. You think I give a damn? Please. I don't give a damn about, about what Afro, Afro-Colombians think. I don't care about what Africans think. Man, listen. What I got? What? a good? I'm 54. I got a good, what, 30 years left on this planet? 40, if I stretch it out, you think I'm wasting my time giving a damn what these people think? I just did 10 years in the feds of, in, in the 90s. You think I give a damn about what them people think about me in Africa? afro Colombians think about me in Cartagena? I don't give a damn about what they think. If I was with the whitest of whitest snow bunnies, and, I would, and I'm happy, that's all that counts. And that's the exact same thing with you, especially when you got your passport. They don't give a dang about what these people think about you. Don't ever waste your time worrying about what somebody, if you got your passport, and I don't care if you male or female, if you got your passport, a part of the response, they should have put this in the passport, like in the back, all the way in the back. Because in the back right here, paragraph four is, is paragraph D. Paragraph D says, Make sure you file for your taxes. <laughs> but after par- paragraph D, it should be, oh, yeah, by the way, now you got this. It is your responsibility not to give a damn about what somebody else got to say about your life. That's what they should put in the back of the passport. Okay, the first paragraph says... The first paragraph says, okay, there's restrictions on goods and services. So you can't just bring everything in with your into another country with your passport. Okay, I got it. I got it. Uh, nothing, another one says there are customs and border protection. Okay, cool. I got that. I understand. Next one says, okay, agriculture. You can't bring things that you can grow from another country. Okay, I got that. D. Uh, make sure you file your taxes. Okay, I got that. All right. E, Social Security Administration. Yeah, everybody down with Social Security. Okay, cool. Got that. It should be F. Uh, Yeah, you should not be giving a fuck about what nobody else think about your life because you got your passport and you can travel around the world and if they don't like it, they can kiss your black so at the end of the day, it does not even matter what another person thinks because you got your passport and you got options and you have options that they don't. So take advantage of it. That's what it should say at the bottom of your passport. That's what it should say. There is no way in the world you should be worrying about what somebody think about. Listen, if Felicia left the United States finally with her passport, and she went to Ireland and she got her a, a, a Irish dude with the longest Lexington steel that she can find. Is she happy? Like Eve? Well, 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 he's a billionaire. Eve wasn't broke when she left the United States. Well, well he has three kids. Well, Eve got a kid now from him too. So now Eve got a baby and the the, uh, the father got the other three kids. They're blonde and blue-eyed. As much as y'all might want to bitch about what Eve did, at the end of the day, Eve's sleeping good. She, she happy. 
she got her newborn baby she got her husband and she got her her kids from her through her her, her, her adult kids through her husband there's only one of them that's a shorty and that shorty is like 13. And you should see brothers on Facebook and YouTube bitching. Okay, Andrea will be on, on me about cussing because I know she'll be hearing me. Did you curse? Oh, no, babe. Fussing about Eve and her decision. But then we go and get a passport and we do the exact same thing Eve did. Find love in other cultures. So what you saying? Black people shouldn't be with black people. I've never said anything like that. See, that's what you extremists think. You you swing the pendulum. I'm a Libra. I know when the pendulum is being swung too far. Libras, we ain't nothing but pendulums. If we can't tell you nothing. Libras can tell you about swinging other pendulum. You can't tell us nothing about that. We say something, and then black people always want to swing the pendulum all the way. So what you're saying is don't don't date black sisters because I didn't say nothing like that. I said you got choices. Take advantage of it. If you want to go to Ireland and you find you a, a green eyed, naturally red hair flowing down her back, Irish chick, and she ain't never had. She saw Will Smith and she saw Mike Tyson and he you go getting off the plane and she looking like. Lord, it be. I never had a black man. And then yeah, my Irish accent is horrible. But my point is, she looking at you like she wants you. Man, you better take advantage of that Irish with that red hair that you could pull back. You better pull that Irish hair back and stop being scared talking about the sisters. I'm coming to Ireland looking for the sisters. Get your ass up in Ireland. Talking about something I'm looking I'm, I mean, Ireland looking for sisters. What are you doing? What are you thinking? So when I sit back and I talk about brothers that got passports, take advantage of your passport and don't care what nobody else got to say. I will be in Africa with Andrea in a continent of black people. Guess how many black people on the continent of Africa I give a damn about what they think? I'm going to let you think about that for a second. Guess the numerical number of black people that I care about what they think about my marriage to my Colombian wife. While we are on the continent of Africa. Oh, you got it. Not one. Not one. I don't care about what one sister. Oh, don't get me wrong. I'm a man. I'm gonna be just like the rest of y'all. Damn, she fine. Oh, she fine. Oh, she fine too. Oh, look at her. Oh, I'm just like the rest of y'all. She. Oh Lord, look at she. Oh, damn. Mm -mm. Got to put my sunglasses on. She. Oh, yeah. mm -mm. wow. Does that mean I'm about to throw away what I got with this woman for one of these sisters in Africa? No, they can find their own husband. Am I about to throw away what I got with this with, with, with my wife because African sisters want to give me the look like, oh, so you so I, so you with the Colombian girl. I see what you're doing. You with the Colombian girl. So you couldn't wait till you got to Africa to get one of us. I don't give a damn what Africans think about me. It wasn't the African that did them 10 years with me. When you get out the feds, when you get out of any situation, if you are a man about yourself, you do not have time to be worried about what another man thinking. And I don't mean incarceration. Some of us were incarcerated in getting our business. Some of you, some of you guys were incarcerated by going to school and you focused on your education and you got your degree and then you went for your master's degree. Some of you guys went for trade school and you became a truck driver and you drove truck for 10, 15, 20 years. Man, ain't no way you're going to waste your time giving up about what somebody else got to say about you. You spent 20 years in that hot truck delivering products. Sometimes that people sit back and say, well, we don't want the delivery today. We want it tomorrow. 
Some of you do set up there where everybody else is partying in college. You party some, but you make sure you got your degree. And then you you got a passport. And you got to you sit back like, listen, I was incarcerated in college to get these degrees. You think I give a f about what somebody got to say about me? Some of you brothers sat back and you like, I sat in that cubicle on that job and listened to my younger white boss get on my last nerve for 10 years. Some of you dudes were incarcerated in the military for 20 years. I can't scan my leader, but I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and do what I need to do to make sure that I can, can continue to move up the ranks to where I'm the leader now. I got my stripes. I got my bars. Do you think that after all you went through in the, come on, some of you military brothers, think back all of, that you went through day and night, standing up on some nights where your knees was ready to buckle, but it was your night to stand guard. You ready to go to sleep. Come on, military brothers. You ready to go to sleep right there because you partied the night before and you tired as can be. And your sergeant or your leader or the lieutenant or the captain know that you tired and got you out there. And after all you went through in the military, you think you're supposed to get your passport and give up about what somebody else got to say about what you went through? After what you went through? Ladies. Some of you ladies went through the the, the the violence. He couldn't keep his hand off your face. You finally got out that relationship. You think you're supposed to give a about what a black man got to say about you in any country because you dating a white dude now because brothers was putting their hands on you? Some of you sisters got graped when you was young six 16 you got graped and you finally worked your way through college got yourself right start focusing on your feng shui get your mind right you ain't mad at brothers you just don't with brothers and you got your passport you think these sisters are supposed to give a about what you brothers gotta say about them man f you brothers let them sisters live their lives. If they have mixed babies, mix them up. I remember God checked me about that one day. I, man, I used to be one of you brothers that every time I see a sister with a white man, I'm like, I have a look at this. This sister with a white man. And God put me in check. You know what he said to me? I know you ain't talking as much as you like mixed girls. Oh, what? I was like, God, you ain't had to talk. <laughs> I kid you not. I was literally like that. I was like, God, you ain't have to put me on blast. <laughs> I was in the grocery store, and it was this fine sister with this little bald head white dude. I'm like, what? She was with her brother. God just, I mean, he was like, he just chin checked me. Man, shut up. As much as you like mixed women, you only date mixed women. So why you sitting up there talking about some why he with the why she with the white man? As much as you like mixed girls, I, I was like, God, you ain't had to put me on blast in front of everybody in, in Kroger's. You ain't had to just, you could have told me that in private. We could, I could have been in prayer and you could have told me that in private. You ain't had to be putting me out. I kid you not. From that moment, I shut my mouth. Every time it was a mix, it was a, it was a black girl with a white dude or a brother with a, with a sister, a, a white girl, Becky. Shut my mouth. I don't you. I ain't say nothing because God was right. As many mixed girls I loved, please. I'm the last one to open up my mouth, talk about some. Uh, why is the white man with the white with the sister? <laughs> Mix it up. <laughs> After that, I'll start cheering. I man, I joined. Man, listen, before I met Andre. After that day, I kid you not. I went on Instagram and I actually was like, you know, on Instagram, you see like the uh like the white dude marrying the sister and it looked romantic, but you're like, man, forget that, man. I ain't about to, I'm about to give no no, I ain't about to give no heart or support for the white man sitting up there marrying my sister. After that, every time I saw a photo, if the couple was happy, I didn't care what color they was. Heart, 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 heart. Cause I didn't care. Because God was right. 
And you, some of you brothers, you know you love, man, listen. Like one of the last people I dated was, she was Japanese, Mexican, and Puerto Rican. No, 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 Japanese, Mexican, and black. Her dad was black. Her mom was Japanese and Puerto Rican. One of the most beautiful women I've ever seen. Easy, hands down. <coughs> Excuse me. The old Andre would have been like, if I'd have saw her parents, oh, the brother with the da da or, or, or the, 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 the this, that, that, and this. What about our sisters? What about our queens? Man, I shut that up, man. I stopped crying like a little baby. I'm on a planet full of people that's of mixed colors and different complexions. I'm on a planet. A planet. Seven billion people. Did you not think out of seven billion people, other people of different complexions were not going to start dating each other and meeting each other and hanging out with each other and enjoying each other and enjoying life and growing old together? Like, freaking serious? But that's what I was thinking, because I wasn't thinking, like, on a, on a global scale. I'm just thinking about my little neighborhood, my sisters in the brotherhood. Man, get the fuck out of here. Stop all that crying. So all you sisters that's crying, wait for us brothers to come back, that's not going to happen. You might as well let that day go. It's gone. We gone. We ain't coming back. We ain't coming back because we love the United States. We just don't like the United States. Okay? That's A. B, we love you. We just don't like you. You know how you got kids? Like, you're like, I love my kids, but I do not like their little bad asses. They get on my last. Or, you, or te your kids, when they're teenagers, you're like, oh, I love my kids. I cannot stand it. That's how we feel about you, sister, sometimes. I know y'all feel that about us. I love brothers, but I don't like them, my lord. Do not, don't. I ain't mad at you. I'm the last brother to be mad at you. I am not mad at you for not liking brothers, but just loving brothers. I love me a black man, meaning that you will smash your brother, but to, but to be serious about brothers, I'm with you on that. I got you, sisters. You shouldn't be serious about some of them knucklehead brothers that y'all been dealing with. They're pookies and the Ray Rays. And you don't want to be with the good brothers. So, okay. So be it. Because the good brothers got passports now. <laughs> and we don't want to be with you either. See, that's the cool part. See, sisters then got ran through in hurt hearts. And so they like, let me get my passport where I can find some love. Brothers are more or less like, we just tired of hearing about your hurt heart, so we out of here. That's how we are. Good dudes ain't sitting around. Good dudes are like, hey, I'm a good dude because I went and made my money. I done, I done went over here and did with this degree. I done went up here and went to the military. I done sat up here. Everybody talk. It, 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 if good dudes... Good dudes get their passports and, and not dealing with the BS. Half the BS is, or well, part of BS is, we so tired of y'all questioning us, who hurt you? Because you don't want a sister. You must be gay. They will ask you, brothers, or make a statement about you being gay before they make a statement about you liking other races. You notice that? Sisters don't say, you must like white women. They don't say that. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. The first one is who hurt you. Number two is you must be gay. Then number three is racist. And then they always, then they're so naive. This is how naive sisters in the States are. The first group that they want to run to is white women. You must like white women. You must don't know me. I like all women. You got me twisted, girl. White women only? <laughs> you got me fucked up. I don't just like white women, girl. I like, I like them all other than you. Now, I will smash you as a favor, but I like them all. So when white women try to, so when black women try to make us feel bad for liking white women, you need to correct her. Listen, I do not like white women. I like them all. <laughs> I like them all. You need to be telling them. Somebody tried to tell me that one time. You like Latin women. I do not just like Latin women. You got me. This is before I met Andrea. No, no, no. I had just met Andrea. You must like Latin women. You got me fucked up. I like them all. 
Oh, oh, oh. If hey, hey, what's the what's the the female, the blue female in X Men that she could turn into anybody that she want to? I like her as too. She Hulk in the green, she get it too. I'm listen. I all like, oh. when I say all cultures, all oh. if you find all oh. ain't no ain't no fine biasness. I'm not about to sit up here and be like, oh, she's fine, but she's white. No, no, bro. She, she's fine, but she's Latin. No, 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 no. That's not me. It could be a fine orange chick walk up to me and be like, oh man, ain't she orange? That mean I could see her in the dark. <laughs> I ain't never had no. You know me. Hey, 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 fellas. No, no, this is a single Andre talking, not the married Andre. Check it. If you anything like me, I ain't never had no orange pussy. I'm gonna go. <laughs> I'm gonna go holler at her. Hey, orange girl, come here, girl. Fun thing. Who's your daddy? Donald Trump. <laughs> that's why you. That's why you orange. <laughs> <laughs> but at the end of the day, I'm telling you, man, for real, for real, I have no. And a lot of you guys are like me. I haven't even hit the comment section because I already know what's going on in there. But I'm telling you, listen, don't be letting these sisters make you feel guilty. That's how I started. Do not let these sisters make you feel guilty about loving or caring or being concerned about other uh, another a woman from another culture. Do you, bruh? Do you? I got that out. Like I said, I got that out of my system years ago. If I see a sister with a white dude, do it, boo. Do it, boo. Because I never even thought about it. Like I said, God put me in check in that Kroger's. I went in line, and God was like, Who are you to dare? To dare had an audacity to talk about somebody that's a mixed couple as much as you love mixed women. Man, I was like, God, we need to talk. You can't be talking like that. And people might say, oh, come on, God. We could talk about that at the house. You could, you, we could talk about that in the car. You going to put me on blast like that? <laughs> you just go, why, why, why I'm in Kroger's? <laughs> in the line? <laughs> aisle three? Come on, God. Aisle three? Man, listen. I ain't never, I ain't never tripped again on another mixed culture. Never again. I was like, you right. I do love me some mixed women. I love me some mixed girls. So since I already knew that, I stopped judging people based off of biasness that other people told me that I was supposed to have. Because sometimes the black culture tell you to be biased by some stuff that ain't never personally happened to you. You need to hate white people, huh? What? Why? Why? Explain to me why I need why I need to hate white people because of this, that, that. But they, I'm, I'm not a, I'm not a slave. I, I got two degrees and I make six hundred thousand a year. You need to hate white people because not everybody makes money like you. Oh, okay, I got you. I understand. It's not enough black politicians. Okay, all right, okay, all right, got you. And, and, and it's and it's housing and mortgage. Uh, uh, they, they charge you more than what they charge. You. Oh, okay, okay, I'm right. But I still make six hundred thousand a year, so I really don't notice it. So, but but okay, I'm supposed to hate white people because because my grandma and them told me, and my cousin them, and pastor in church told me, and I read the history books. Okay, I, I, I hate. Okay, I'll hate white people. Okay. Some of y'all, let's be real. Personally. Personally, how much racial sh really happened to you in your lifetime personally? Well, it was that one time when Officer Timpson stopped me in Kentucky. Okay, I give you that one time. Well, they did pass a bill to try to take away the, my, my voting rights. Bruh, you ain't voted in three years. Remember you said you against voting. Well, I had a boss one time that I was walking past and he cracked a racial joke when I was walking through. 
Was it towards you? No, but I heard it. If, if we sat back and did a survey on black people in the United States that could say direct. Now, I'm not saying racism and, and bigotry does not exist in the United States because, you know, the United States is a bigot, racist, <laughs> all of us. But to sit back and say what happened directly to you, to where you could say one time I was in college and the professor said I don't pass black people. I don't give them A's. Okay, that's directly to you. One time I went for a job interview, it was five white dudes, and and then I had more qualifications and they had, and, and I didn't get the job. That's directly towards you. I got you. I'm with you. One time there was a white girl that said, well, I don't date black men. I'm sorry. That's directly to you. But most dudes... They may have had in, in a lifetime. Let's be for real. Maybe one, maybe three racial issues that happened to you in your life. <clears throat> so half of your racism was based off of because your mama told you you're supposed to be racist. Grandma, cousin, Nook, Nook, Ray Ray, all them dudes. So because they said we're supposed to be racist. And well, black people can't be racist. You know what I mean by when I say racist, I mean biased. So since they say, uh, I don't care what you do, you better not bring a white girl up in this house. You didn't date a white girl. As much as you liked white girls when you was in junior high school, but because mom said, I don't care who you bring up, you better not bring a white girl. Didn't explain to you nothing. Nothing. You ain't know nothing about racism when you was in when you was in the ninth grade. Eighth grade. Why am I saying all this? Why am I saying this? The reason why I'm saying this is. There is value in options. If your choice is black sisters around the world, go for it, black man. Go for it, white dude, Latin dude. If that's your choice, and you say, oh, man, I'm sorry, Dre. All I mess with is just sisters, bro. I'm with you, brother. Do your thing. Do your th I'm with you. Do your thing. But if you would do that, the reason why you ain't mess with sisters in this, I mean, mess with uh, other cultures in the States is because you didn't have options or because you didn't want to make sisters feel bad in the States. I'm sorry, you got a passport now. Fuck what sisters got to think in the States. Fuck them. All of them that sit back and try to tell you about who you supposed to believe in. I mean, not believe in, but trust in and, and, and support the whole time that you got a passport. If you go to Portugal and you find you a long, tall one that looks like she's from Brazil and she just happened to be a white girl, so be it. Do your thing, brother. Do your thing. And let all them sisters in Portugal look at you like, so you came to Portugal and all these fine African-looking sisters and you didn't get one of them and you got what you a tall, white girl? Give a damn about what you think. I'm 40. I might have another 40 years on this planet. You think I'm going to worry about what the fuck you think about me? For real? That's how you need to start thinking. If you got this, you got the right to tell females, I'm sorry, boo, but I don't give a fuck about what you thinking. I really don't. And that means every country you go to, not just the sisters in the States, not just the white girls in the States, not just the Latin girls in the States, any woman that tries to tell you what a, a man with a passport, how she think, <laughs> I'm sorry, sisters. I'm, so, I'm sorry, Afro-Colombian sisters. I hear what you're saying, but uh, I don't give a f what you think. 
I'm so, I'm sorry, sisters in 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 in, in Mozambique. I enjoy your country. I love my sisters. Anything I could do to make the community better, I'm with that. But uh, at the end of the day, I don't give a f what you think about me. I'm sorry. <laughs> I know we in Europe, my European is, is sisters in Europe, and, and you know I'm supposed to be down with my sisterhood. I got you. I'm down with my sisterhood. Anything y'all need, my support, picket signs, I got you. But at the end of the day, I got my girl. I'm happy. And at the end, I'm sorry. I don't give a f what you think about me, sisters in Europe. Half the problem that we got as brothers, because we spent half our lives giving a f what sisters think about us. You got your passport. Well, half the reason why you got your passport was so you could be in a position of life that you don't give a f about what sisters got to say about you. Let's be real. Let's be real. Spend a half your fucking life worried about if sister think this, sister think that, when the sister did, sister, sister. What fuck would sisters think about me no more? I love sisters. Love them. Lo I will support them. I, I'm down for the sisters. I think they're the most beautiful women in the world. There is nobody more beautiful than black women. I got you. But if you couldn't get this one black man, one, one black man, one, if you couldn't keep me from sitting my tail down in 50 years, I am not coming back to the sisterhood. And some of you brothers are just like me. And you dating sisters and you wonder why you ain't faithful. <laughs> and you dating sisters and you wonder why you ain't focused. And you dating sisters and you still paying, you still talking about you owe me 50% of the bills. And then you date another culture and all of a sudden your manhood get on track and you just be like, oh, you know what? I'm go ahead and do the right thing. You pulling up your tie and you, or you going out to get your job, you know, pulled yourself together as a man and all of a sudden she encouraging you and she cooking every meal and you ain't got to worry about that and she's making sure everything's taken care of with the kids and you're focused all you got to do is focus on your manhood and bringing in supplies for the family and you like Shh, i ain't got to deal with these sisters no more why i got a woman that care about me supplying for the family and all of a sudden you become the man who you're supposed to be and you was with sisters for 30, 40, 50, 60 years, and they ain't did for you, but make you make all they did was 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 support the stereotype that black men got good. That's it. You go to any part of the world, and what do they say about black man? Any black man, Jamaican, African, don't matter. African American, Brazilian. What 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 are we known for? He got good then. That's it. He 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 he, he, he got good then. You know how insulting that is as a man who walked on this planet for 50 years, and the most that women can say, oh my God, he's he's black. He got good. Then. What the? F so I'm supposed to waste the next 50 years with sisters that do nothing for me but push the narrative that I got good at. Fuck out of here. Let me go in the comment section because I know y'all probably eat me alive like this name. I'm gonna start this 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 go around. I'm gonna start from the bottom to the top. Y'all been talking. Yeah, yeah. I hope, oh, hope it's not about me. I love that they put the brother in the part of the king, king to conquer. That's that's me. I'm king to conquer, dude. Listen, I'm a multiverse man <laughs> for real. <coughs> okay. Uh, well, Charles. Okay, uh, don't give that person any light drink. Okay, what person are you guys talking about? Let me know who you guys are talking about. Wow, Bruce, LOL Bruce. Let me go. Y'all talking about somebody who's in here shouldn't be here?
I had to say it. No, sir. Dre hitting home. Prophet Omar, where where is Felicia? Okay, you guys are asking for the moderator. So what's going on? Let me know what's going on. Uh, a life I won't I won't provide for. Knee deep in Asia. Okay. I like your channel and you too much for this rant. Is this the same? Wait a minute, pause. Is this the same dude from before? Hold a minute. Let me, let, if I say, hey, hey, Thomas, if I read one more statement, I'm going to have to shut you down. Okay. Hey, N word. Okay, you done. Okay, I didn't even read the statement. As soon as I saw the end, where I was like, you know what? He, I'm done. My bad, guys. I didn't see it. Some of these dudes stay up all night sleeping in closets. <laughs> I don't go to McDonald's, uh, but I hear you. Shout out to Kang, Profe, blah, blah. blah. Shit you haven't been through, drive through in South Central. Okay, I'm dipping. <laughs> I'm dipping. If that's the person who you guys you guys were talking about, was that Thomas? Sorry, Dre. Uh, listening was about the truth. Uh, height is not an issue outside. True. That's true. Good point, Anthony. Height is not an issue outside the United States. Man, height is cool. You know, I'm six three. It's cool, uh, but it's not like a must. It's not like a must because, for example, the average South American person is like five ten, like five six to five ten as far as men. And to them, like five ten is tall. Like he's tall. Like what? Like Andrea's brothers is five ten. They considered. He's, he's considered tall in Colombia. Like, okay. Felicia out. Felicia on her third dream. We've been here like almost five hours, guys. So we're about to wrap this up in seven minutes. I've been hearing Andrea Russell. So that, mean, that means Andrea is like, okay, where is my husband? <laughs> when I hear Andrea walking back, back and forth, usually it's like, where is my husband? Shout out to Dre. Uh, we're in here. Kang, shout out to you, brother. Kang's back to deliver the facts. That's what's up, brother. Straight from the multiverse. What? Felicia's still here. <laughs> Felicia, like, don't get it twisted just because I wanted to go take a shower. <laughs> and Andre keep talking. I already know how he is. I could take a shower, make some tea, walk the dog, and still I could pack some boxes and still Andre talking. <laughs> that is funny. Tell him Andre, yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. We're Charles Jones. Wait a minute. Where's Charles Jones? Oh, wait, he blocked me. Did Charles block you? Are you no? He, let me know if let me let me know, uh, Profe. I'm, I'm just taking a look. Mm -hmm.
Shout out to you brothers with the cash apps. I appreciate you brothers as well. Okay, we're down to four minutes. Four minutes. How come I look like I got a tan? Where Charles? Oh, wait, he blocked me. Uh, yeah, I'll be having a talk with, with, with my brethren. Because I still see you. Okay, uh, talking about ice cream machines <laughs> broke again uh, today, and they ain't got no no sweet ice. Okay, I'm 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 really dipping. The purpose of my rant today, guys the the ending part of the rant is, and, and this this for Felicia too, especially for Felicia. Kevin, the pandemic in in the mass murders have taught us one thing. There is no guarantee for tomorrow. I wish I could put it some other poetic way. That's why, Felicia, we were so adamant about you getting your passport. There is no tomorrow. There is no, well, after I get done moving, and this, there is no after you get done moving. You have to treat your life as if there is no after you get done. Well, when I get done with it, no, 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 Felicia. No. When we say get your passport, because we know what it's like to be in a position of, well, I'm in the middle of doing something even though something else has come up. You're in the middle of moving or preparing to move, but yet the urgency or the desire to get your passport has come up. Apply for your passport. There are post offices on every corner, like in like the other brothers say, a passport offices. There's a post office on every corner. There's a CVS and a Walgreens on every corner to get your passport photo for 12 bucks, if not 15 bucks. They will walk you through the, the passport application. You get your money orders and everything. Get your passport. And for us dudes that are celebrating the fact that we have our passport, we try to encourage others to have their passports as well. So if you're a guy and you don't have your passport, we already talked about tonight that you can get your passport. There is no excuse. Even if you're paying child support, even if you have a felony, even if you owe back taxes. If you don't owe 55000 then you can you apply for your passport. Well, I hope this 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 uh episode was informative. I am going to take a shower, go to bed, get some rest. Antoine. Make sure that you email me, brethren. I appreciate and I ain't got nothing but love for all you guys that have supported and continue to support Love Crossing Borders. Every time you guys show up to the airport and you get off the plane and I get a chance to see you guys face to face and just give you the brotherly hug and just throw your bags in the back trunk and let you. And I know what you're about to experience because you're about to hang out with me. I'm, I'm happy. It's like I'm experiencing Cali for the first time through you guys' eyes and you ladies' eyes because we got females down here. We just like the sister that we went to the uh, the soccer game with and her and her husband are down here. And since they moved down here, now her mom, his mom and dad have been down here. Her sisters have been down. Her whole family, has. they've only been here three months. They live right down the street from us, Zone 5. In three months, they have not only had their whole family come down to visit, but travel all throughout Colombia in visiting. And prior to, nobody was here in their family in Cali. And they started following and watching Love Crossing Borders. And they were like, and then they joined our, our travel group and our WhatsApp group. And it just blossomed from there. So now we got friends and boy, she, she cooked desserts. Oh my God. 
Oh, she's about to ruin my diet. I swear she about to ruin my diet. But <laughs> whew, me and Andrew looking like, did, did you taste that? Did you taste it? I know, baby. I taste it. <laughs> so <laughs> at the end of the day, we appreciate all of you guys that give us the opportunity to see Cali for the first time through you eyes, through your eyes. And you guys that get a chance to come to Brazil and you guys that go on to Ecuador, we get a chance to see South America in general for the first time through your eyes. And like I said, we don't have nothing but love for you. Thank you for supporting the channel. If you have any questions, make sure you email us or just schedule a consultation. We're going to set up the Patreon in the next few days. I know I'm finishing the last bit off. Uh, to get it all set up. And so you guys that are interested in supporting the channel, we are going to have everything set up for you guys. But uh, you guys, it's, it's now we have five hours and two minutes. So once again, my name is Andre with Love Crossing Borders. I am out of here. I'm going to get some rest. You guys get some rest too. Had a great evening. We had fun. <laughs>